The scene opens by showing Princess Alicia of the Highland Kingdom and her associates exploring a certain part of the kingdom. They find ancient ruins, which seem to be interesting. From what they can deduce, Alicia's subordinates believe that the drawings on the wall point to a legend called Shepherd. Alicia talks about how her close subordinate, Clem, is going to be excited if she sees the ruins. Shortly afterward, they return to the capital. Clem is busy telling the people about the trial of the blade that will take place during the Sacred Blade Festival, when Tao shows up to relieve of duty, because the princess is asking of her. She gets to the princess's office, and she is informed that she needs to take an official trip. Professor Drake, the astronomer, has reported a strange cloud above the region in Greel. The princess wants Clem to check this out. Later on, the council talks about how they want to use the trial of blades to select more people for the army, but Alicia is against this. She doesn't want any of her subjects to be used as tools of war. Two weeks later, Clem hasn't returned, and the princess decides to go to Greel herself to check things out. She leaves with Tao and two other associates of hers. While they are on their way to Greel, they are attacked by masked men. The princess is not to joke with as she is able to hold her own against her enemy. She is strong enough to defeat this person and even break the mask on his face. She demands to know who sent him, but another voice distracts her from the woods. It turns out to be the leader of the bad guys. The bad guy changes his appearance to what looks like an evolved human or sorcerer. Once he does this, he disappears right in front of Alicia. A quick scene shows what the trial of the blade is. This simply requires one of the citizens to pull out a sword stuck in a stone. Any individual who does this is considered the shepherd, and he is a special individual. It is a King Arthur kind of thing, you know? Later on, Alicia tells her subordinates about the giant and impressive aqueduct located below Greel. She sincerely hopes Clem is safe and sound before they get to Greel. They reach a vineyard and they get interested in the grapes. They get down to observe, and the owner's daughter is the first to show, questioning their presence in the vineyard. Alicia's subordinates want to get angry at this, but Alicia cautions them. With the arrival of the owner, Alicia is able to create a bridge between herself, the owner, and her daughter. This also gives her the opportunity to ask certain questions concerning the mist that is visible in the sky. They make their way to the guard station where they find a guard to talk to. He lets them know that Clem went towards the forest in the north the last time he saw her. The direction she went to is also in the direction of the mist that nobody basically knows anything about. The only thing they know about the mist is the fact that it is growing. The princess heads to the forest to investigate, but tells Tao to stay back in the town for observation. Soon afterward, they reach the desert land, and Alicia can see Clem in the distance. Clem doesn't know that the mist is already going crazy behind her. Alicia shouts to warn her, and once she sees this, she gets scared and thinks of running away. She then remembers that Professor Drake just entered into the aqueduct to make further investigations. Alicia thinks of waiting for Drake, but with the way the mist is acting, the safest option for them is to move away. Clem gets on Alicia's horse, and they start riding away. Meanwhile, Drake is not really feeling the destruction that is happening on the surface. Clem talks about how the professor believes that there were super Supreme beings living amongst humans in the past, but the humans forgot about them, and what is currently happening might be a punishment for that. A giant eye emerges above the aqueduct, and the professor realizes that he is done for. A wave of dark matter flows toward the professor and consumes him. At the same time, Alicia's subordinates are getting ripped off by the mist. The only people left are Alicia and Clem, and Clem suggests that Alicia lets her off the horse, but she refuses. They ride past a young girl, who appears to be a sorcerer. She talks about opening the gate of chaos, and just as she says this, she goes after Alicia at a blinding speed. She creates several fiery obstacles to stop the horse, but Alicia continues to navigate her way through. The male sorcerer from before appears before them to cut them off, and this just makes things even worse. The guy goes crazy and releases a bunch of destruction spells that send Clem into the deep abyss, leaving Alicia the only person alive. Alicia just lost all of her comrades, Clem, Gannett, and Bolta, in the space of minutes. She falls to her knees crying, and the female sorcerer disappears after saying she has lost interest. This causes the male sorcerer to also stop whatever it is that he is doing. Alicia stands up and starts walking toward the town, only to get there and find out that there is no town again because everything has been leveled. In the middle of all this, she sees a kid walking toward her, but the mist appears again and swallows up the kid. Alicia holds onto a pole to avoid getting sucked up into the mist. She watches in horror as a ball of fire transforms into a dragon right above her, leaving her in a traumatic state. A young female knight walks through the forest and sees the ruins of a building. She goes into the building to hide from the falling rain and falls asleep, thinking about the world. She wakes up in the morning and notices a mural that suggests she is in the Temple of the Shepherds. She looks around the temple and studies the mural of the shepherd, but does not realize that she is being followed by a normal seraph. The seraph tries several times to get her attention, as she reads the prophecy of the seraphim before the mural of the shepherd, to no avail. Suddenly some bugs appear but the girl doesn't notice them. The seraph helps her by creating a shield 
that protects her from the bugs. The girl notices the bugs and panics, but then she sees a hole the Seraph created in the wall and decides to break the wall further so that she can escape from the bugs. She gets through the hole, but there are bugs on her body, and in a panic, she falls into a flowing stream that carries her to a different realm. The female knight finds herself in another ruined building and wonders if it is another ruin of Asgard. She explores the place and sees a courtyard where she finds a stone sculpture with the mark of the shepherd. Suddenly, the stone sculpture moves away from her to the front of a waterfall. The sculpture lights up and a building emerges from the waterfall before the stone sculpture, proving the prophecy to be true. Meanwhile, a boy named Sore, who is very curious about ruins, runs towards the ruins of a city and marvels at them. His friend Mikleo, who is a seraphim, joins him and scolds him for his untamed curiosity to explore ruins. Mikleo, however, joins him, and they leave the land of the seraphim. Sore shows Mikleo a land hidden by illusion that would lead to the ruined city. Just as they are about to begin exploring the land, an old seraphim appears, whom they call Gramps, and stops them from exploring the land. He explains that the land had been sealed off a long time ago, warns them not to investigate or explore the land, and then reactivates the illusion. That night, the boys think back on the land, and Sore shows Mikleo some information from the Celestial Record about the arrival of the Seraphim to the land of the humans. Sore explains the relationship between the Seraphim and the humans, how the humans revered the Seraphim, and how the Seraphim spread across the world to help the humans in their times of need. Mikleo wonders if the ruin they saw was the ruins of the capital of the Seraphim, and Sore answers that he believes it was, According to the Celestial Records, Sori shares some information about the way humans had lived with Seraphim in the past, and Mikleo comments on Sori's interest in the Celestial Record. They both decide to check out the ruins, and Mikleo reminds Sori that the ruined city is outside Gramps' area of protection. Both boys pledge to be the first to get to the ruins. As Sori approaches the ruin from another side, he uses a rope to get over an entrance where he sees a mural of the Shepherd, which proves the existence of the Shepherd. He celebrates his win, and then he sees a glove and is checking it out when Mikleo appears and takes the glove from him. Mikleo praises him for winning the race to the ruin, and Sarai teases Mikleo for losing more than once. Suddenly the clouds changed and lightning struck, making the boys scared and wondering what was happening. Sore notes that the lightning is not natural just as the female knight notices the lightning. She heads towards it, but is almost struck, and she runs back inside the ruins. A seraphim named Kaimi reports to Gramps where he is meditating. Kaimi tells Gramps about the lightning, and Gramps answers that he is aware of the recent development. He asks if Sore and Mikleo have returned, and Kaimi replies that they have yet to return to Elysia. Gramps then tells Kaimi that he will remain behind for some time, and Kaimi takes his leave. The female knight runs into a large alcove inside the ruins, and a statue strikes her with lightning. She dodges it, but the floor gives way, and she falls, becoming unconscious. Gramps remains in his meditative state, saying that he will deal with whatever evil enters his domain. Meanwhile, Mikleo and Sore run around trying to escape being struck by the lightning. The lightning destroys the path, but Sore escapes in time and joins Mikleo. They go on, but the floor gives way before them, and they both fall into a hole. As they fall down the hole, Mikleo, who is affiliated with the element of water, uses his power to save Sore, and then lands gracefully after him. He checks on Sore and sees that he is okay, then comments on the place they found themselves in. The boys explore to find a way out of the ruins. They get to a place, and Sore notices the unconscious female knight. He points her out to Mikleo, and Mikleo reminds him that he has been told by Gramps to stay away from other humans, but Sori refuses and decides to help her. Mikleo agrees to help also, and they use a rope to get across a chasm to a place close to her. Mikleo reminds Sori that they are not close to the girl yet, and Sori points out a body of water to Mikleo. Mikleo realizes that it is his turn to help them. Mikleo uses the water to build a bridge, and they run across it to see the girl. As they cross the bridge, they comment on the state of the ruin and marvel at the expertise of the crafters who made the sculptures. Sore approaches the girl and wakes her up. The girl is surprised to see Sore, who offers to help her up. She refuses Sore's help to stand and helps herself up, then apologizes for the trouble. Sore introduces himself, and she asks him if he is the shepherd which shocks both Sori and Mikleo. Sori replies that he is not the shepherd, but a regular human like her. Mikleo looks at her without concern, aware that she cannot see him. The female knight wonders if the ruins are the capital of the Seraphim, and Sorey replies that they are. In anticipation, she asks about the shepherd, and Sorey tells her that he has only seen the mural of the shepherd. The girl becomes sad, thinking that the prophecy was only a legend, and that the world can no longer be saved. Later, Sori decides to take the girl to Elysia, and Mikleo tries to dissuade him, reminding him that he would get into trouble for his decision. Sore tells Mikleo that he cannot ignore someone in need, 
and Miklio reminds him that the girl has refused to share her name. Sorei turns to look at the girl following him some steps behind, and looking sad. He replies to Miklio that she must have a reason for her silence. The girl thanks Sorei for his help, but Sorei tells her not to worry about it. Miklio warns Sorei about the wrath of Gramps, and Sorei is immediately saddened, which makes the girl wonder if something is wrong. Miklio looks at the girl, knowing that she cannot see him. The boys take the girl to the home of the Seraphim, and she marvels at the beauty of the place. Sori shares some information about the Seraphim, and the girl wonders if Sori reads the Celestial Records as well. Sorei is amazed that she also reads the Celestial Record, and the girl finds out that the name of the city is Elysia. Mikleo announces to Sorei that he is going to report to Gramps just as the rest of the Seraphim appear before the girl. Sorei rushes forward and wants to introduce the Seraphim, but the girl suddenly speaks to the Seraphim herself. Although she cannot see the Seraphim, she tells them about the state of the world and pleads for their help, but the Seraphim just looks at her. One of the Seraphim tells Sorei to tell the girl to leave before she invites trouble, and then they all turn to leave. Later, Gramps scolds Sorei for his actions, and Mikleo reminds Gramps that he had promised to listen to Sorei's argument. Gramps then asks Sorei about his reason, and Sorei explains the reason for doing what he did. Gramps tells him to send the girl back as she is human, and humans bring disaster to the land of the Seraphim. Sorei reminds Gramps that he is also human, and Gramps replies that Sorei has been with them for a long time, enough to acclimate with the Seraphim. Sorei asks why Gramps had given him the Celestial Record, then mentions some things he had seen in the Celestial Record about the relationship between the Seraphim and the humans in the past. Sorei adds that the girl, who has been kept in a secure place, believes in the Seraphim, but Gramps does not say anything. The girl apologizes to Sorei while they are eating for startling him. She has started to doubt the existence of the Seraphim, and Sori asks where she is from, moving away from the topic of the existence of the Seraphim. She then tells Sorei about her home city, Lady Lake, the capital of Highland. Sorei remembers the capital from the Celestial Record and the prophecy that whoever pulls out the sword from the lake becomes the shepherd. That night, as the girl sleeps, Sorei steps out of his house to see Mikleo waiting for him. Mikleo gives him a message from Gramps, which makes Sorei very happy. Gramps had decided to let the human girl remain in the land of the Seraphim until she was ready to leave of her own accord. Sorei thanks Mikleo and asks him to thank Gramps for him too. Later, Mikleo stands under the stars and recalls the words of Gramps where he commented on Sorei's good nature. The next morning, Sori shows the female knight around the town. He hunts a wild boar as she watches, and she wonders if he has lived in the town all his life. He replies that he has. Gramps watches them from a distance, knowing that she can't see him. He senses a different presence and reacts, but Sorei assures her that someone wants to know more about her. She teases him for letting her continue to believe that the Seraphim truly existed. As she slept that night, she had a terrible nightmare that made her scream, and Sorei rushed to check on her. She notices that he is with the Celestial Record, and Sorei mentions that he has read it over and over. She shares her dream of exploring the world also, but regrets that the world is not fit to be explored. She told him about the state the world is in, her own experiences with the crisis that befell the world, and how the memories are still fresh in her mind. Sorei recalls a passage from the Celestial Record and mentions that she seeks the Shepherd. She steps out of the house unhappy that she has failed in her mission to find the Shepherd. As she cries about her woes, Gramps and some other Seraphim watch her from a distance. Sori rushes to Mikleo's room the next day to ask for something, but Mikleo doesn't understand his request. Sori leaves him and searches the grounds outside, then he sees his blanket covering the female knight. Sorei realizes that Gramps had been the one who covered her. Later, Sorei takes the girl to the ruins of the capital of the Seraphim and shows her the mural of the shepherd. She marvels at the mural, and Sorei comments on it too. Then he shows her the glove he found at the site. As he talks, he loses his footing, but regains it before he falls. Sorei then shares his dream to let humans and Seraphim live together happily again, and offers the glove he found to the female knight. She thanks him for giving her hope again. Later, she says her farewell to Sorei, thanking him for everything he had done for her. As she turns to go, she gives her name as Alicia Difta, then apologizes for not being honorable enough to give her name despite being a knight. She also apologizes for doubting the existence of Seraphim in Elysia, and Sorei becomes very happy. She tells him that they did not respond to her greetings, but she is sure that they can hear her. Meanwhile, Gramps and the other Seraphim watch her from behind Sorei. Alicia then tells Sorei about the upcoming festival of the Sacred Blade, and asks if he is interested in taking the trial. She also gives him the glove, and reminds him of the dream he shared with her the day before, comparing him to the shepherd in the legend. As she walks away, Gramps and Mikleo join him. Suddenly, Gramps feels the presence of an intruder, and commands the Seraphim to search for the intruder. Sori and Mikleo go together to search for the intruder, which is a Hellion. 
The other Seraphim check around Elysia looking for the Hellion as well. Sori and Miklio notice something and run towards the place where they see the Hellion choking a Seraphim named Mason. The boys threaten the Hellion and ask him to leave, but the Hellion refuses. He laughs at them and insults them, prompting the boys to bring out their weapons to fight with him. Sore rushes forward to fight, but the Hellion beats him back. The Hellion throws him into the air and then knocks him around, but Mikleo helps Sore by attacking the Hellion with long-range attacks. The Hellion turns to Mikleo and almost strikes him up close, but Sore gets there in time to knock the Hellion back. The Hellion gets back up, but before they can continue the fight, Gramps shows up and tells the Hellion to leave. The Hellion feels the difference in power level and leaves saying that he has been distracted from his goal. Soray apologizes to Gramps for the invasion of the Hellion into Elysia, and Macleo scolds him for taking the blame. Gramps agrees with Macleo and tells Soray not to feel guilty for the invasion, then tells the boys that peace in the world means there would be peace in Elysia. Meanwhile, the Seraphim are healing Mason, who was injured in the Hellion attack. That night, Sori thinks back on the fight with the Hellion and his words where he said he had been distracted from his main goal. Sori realizes that the Hellion is after Alicia, and decides to leave Elysia to save her. As he steps through the gate of Elysia, he apologizes, and suddenly he hears Mikleo's voice behind him. Mikleo had been waiting for him. Mikleo shares his deductions from the fight and tells Sarai that Gramps had told him to go and check out the ruins. He had found a knife that suggests that Alicia is more than just an ordinary knight. She is a member of the royal family of Highland. Sarai appreciates Mikleo for joining him on his quest, but worries that Gramps would be mad about his decision to leave. Mikleo gives Sarai a message from Gramps to walk the path he believes in, as he will not go astray. The boys walk through the forest and get to the edge of the human forest, marveling at the beauty of the human world. Sore and Mikleo run through the forest until they reach a clearing and see Lady Lake, the capital of Highland, hoping to find Alicia. They marvel at the beauty of the city, its structure, and the bridge connecting the island city to the rest of the mainland. As they get on the bridge and see a lot of people, Mikleo agrees with Sori, and they run towards the queue. Sori tries to get ahead, but the people block his path. He hears a girl speak behind him and turns to look at her. The girl comments on him being new in town for the Sacred Blade Festival. She asks if he has a pass, but he is unsure what a pass is. Mikleo, who cannot be seen by regular humans, observes the girl and the crew of her caravan. The girl decides to help Soray and leads him through the gate as part of her merchant crew of Sparrow Feathers, which can enter any city freely. After helping Soray through the gate, she asks for payment, and Mikleo whispers in Soray's ear that money is a necessity for humans. But Soray tells her that he does not have any money, and she becomes frustrated as she searches his bag. She finds the knife he is supposed to give Alicia, and he pleads with her to return the knife as he has to return it to his friend. The girl tells him that he will pay later and then shows Sore around the city. Sore is happy with the bustling activity in the city and she reminds him that it is the Sacred Blade Festival. Just then, her crew alerts her and she takes her leave of Sori, saying she has to attend to her business. Sori thanks her for everything and Mikleo reminds him that they have to start looking for Alicia. Suddenly Mikleo feels the growing malevolence in the city, and Sori takes him to a place to rest. Sori sees the Hellion who attacked Elysia mocking them before running off, and they give chase. The Hellion jumps off a building, and Sori does the same, landing away from the Hellion. He asks the Hellion why he is after Alicia, and the Hellion replies that he is not after Alicia, but that he is after her because she brings him entertainment. The Hellion lets them know that there is a contract for the assassination of the princess, and laughs at the anticipation before taking off. Meanwhile, Alicia visits a gravesite with her master Maltran. They talk about the recent developments that have happened in the city since the princess's excursion to Elysia. Maltran also tries to dissuade the princess from her ideals, but the princess is adamant. Maltron lets her know that the upper brass of the city would not accept her decision and warns her to think carefully about her actions before leaving. Chancellor Bartlow meets with the representatives of the assassination organization, Scattered Bones. He shares his doubts about the princess's ability to lead the kingdom in the right direction and also accuses her of conniving with the enemy kingdom, Rollins. The Scattered Bones representative tells the Chancellor that they would take the contract, knowing the amount of lies that would be saved after the death of the Princess. The Chancellor convinces them that the Princess is leading the kingdom down the wrong path, and the assassins take the job. The Hellion spots a Seraphim walking with the crew of the Sparrow Feather Merchants and leaves. The final day of the Sacred Blade Festival begins, during which the warriors attempt to retrieve the sword that represents the Shepherd. Mikleo and Sore watch the proceedings, and then they see a Seraphim lying close to the sword, realizing that she is the Lady of the Lake. Mikleo explains the truth of the legend. If a warrior attempts to pull the sword out but fails to do so, the Lady of the Lake looks up and complains about the malevolence that fills the entire city. Maltron announces that the Festival of the Sacred Blade has been restored, 
because Alicia has hoped that the Shepherd will be produced that year. An assassin watches Alicia, and the Hellion watches them all, excited about whatever is about to happen. Soray and Mikleo discuss the prospect of being the Shepherd, as another fails to pull out the sword. Alicia addresses the people, apologizing for the failure to produce the Shepherd. She also informs them about the growing malevolence around the world and speaks about their strained relationship with Rollins, their neighbor. As she speaks, the people's negativity grows, and the hall becomes filled with malevolence. She speaks against striking at Rollins first, and the dissatisfaction from the audience grows more and more. Maltron senses that the mood of the people could turn into a riot and reaches for her, feeling the malevolence and fear from the people growing and taking form, turning into a Hellion. The Hellion starts damaging the hall, and although the people cannot see the Hellion, they can see the damage it causes. Sore watches the entire thing with Mikleo who is gravely affected by the growing malevolence. Soray runs to help Alicia, and is knocked around by the Hellion. Alicia looks around at the people who are in disarray, and Soray comments that she cannot see the Hellion. He runs to meet the Lady of the Lake and asks her to help against the Hellion. The Lady of the Lake replies that only shepherds can purify Hellions. Alicia watches as Soray stands before the sword, and is surprised that Soray can truly see the Seraphim. Just then, the assassin lands behind her and attacks her, but she defends herself well against the assassin. Alicia questions the assassin, who tells her that she has caused suffering among the people. Maltran watches the fight and wants to go help Alicia, but Bartlow reminds her that Alicia can defend herself and that the people need to be evacuated. The Hellion attacks again, and Sori is torn between going after the Hellion and helping Alicia, who is being pushed back by the assassin. Alicia stops him and tells him to help the people, as she believes that he can. Sori walks towards the sword, and the Lady of the Lake stops him, asking him why he wants to be a shepherd. She gives her name as Layla, and Sore shares his dream of traveling around the world to search for knowledge on how to get the Seraphim and the humans to live together in harmony again. As Sore shares his dream with Lila, Mikleo puts out the fire caused by the Hellion while Alicia struggles with the assassin. He reaches for the sword, and time stops. Layla speaks to him from his heart that she would serve as a vessel for him as well, and he would take on the burden of the shepherd. He would be lonely and would make decisions that hurt him. Sori listens to everything Layla says about the burden of the shepherd and accepts the role as he recalls the seraphim who had been with him all his life. He pulls out the sword, and time resumes. The Hellion attacks Alicia, and Sore, who has been transformed into a more powerful form, attacks the Hellion. Mikleo sees the new form of Sore and is surprised. Sore, on the other hand, gets Lila's true name, and her power becomes his. Lila guides him to unleash his power, which he does, purifying the Hellion and clearing the malevolence in the hall. Alicia is glad that Sore is the shepherd, and the assassin sees that the opportunity to strike at the princess is gone and runs away. The people are amazed by the development, and Mikleo screams as Sore collapses on the ground. Sore wakes up on a strange bed and sees Mikleo and Lila waiting for him. Mikleo tells him that he has been out for three days, and he remembers the event of the battle with the Hellion and then asks after Alicia. Just then, Alicia comes into the room to help him, and she becomes overjoyed at seeing that he is awake. She plies him with food, and he eats until he is filled, then thanks her for the food and also for taking care of him. Alicia thanks Saray for becoming the shepherd and quelling the riot. She also gives him a gift, a cloth that distinguishes him as the shepherd. Layla comments on the cloth, and Mikleo mocks him for it. Sori teases Mikleo and Alicia, who are surprised that Sori is speaking to no one she can see. She asks if the Seraphim are there. Sore ushers Mikleo before her and introduces him to her, although she can't see Mikleo. Sore also tells her of Lila, and Alicia becomes sad that there is nothing that can be done about the human situation, despite the Seraphim being so close to them. Lila says it is not true, but Alicia cannot hear her. Layla then tells Sore to hold Alicia's hand so that she can communicate their voice to Alicia through Sore. Sore does as she says, but Alicia still is unable to hear the Seraphim. They try something else, and still, Alicia cannot hear. Mikleo wonders if Sore is not concentrating hard enough, and then Lila suggests that Sore hold his breath for a while. Lila tries again, and Alicia can hear her voice. Her eyes light up with joy at being able to hear the Seraphim. Mikleo speaks up in surprise, and Alicia can hear him too. Alicia apologizes for being rude, but Mikleo replies that she has never struck him as being rude. Layla speaks encouragingly to Alicia, and advises her not to neglect the Seraphim. As they speak, Sori releases his breath, and Alicia wishes he would try once more, but Sori says that there should be a better method to do it. Sori becomes glad that he would be able to channel the Seraphim's voices to everyone, and Lila lets him know that Alicia had been born with the talent to perceive the Seraphim which was why it was able to work with her, but not everyone's like that. Alicia is glad that she was able to converse with the Seraphim, 
Just then, a maid appeared to deliver a message to Alicia. Layla suggests that Soray go into town as well, and as they move through the town, Soray is shocked at the displays around the town in respect of the shepherd. Alicia explains how the people had come to show their love and respect for the shepherd. Soray feels something tugging at his heart, and Alicia asks him about it, and he replies to her that he is nervous. Alicia drops them off, and Sori thanks her for the ride as she cannot see the others. The trio walks a bit before Sori starts feeling lightheaded. Macleo asks asks him about it, and he replies that he was feeling better earlier but is now nauseated. Layla explains that it is the result of the growing malevolence. Soray tells them that the malevolence feels different, and Layla asks him the source of the malevolence, but he is unable to tell. Lila then guides him to be able to tell the source of the malevolence. He does and leads the Seraphim to the source of the malevolence, which is an underground waterway. The council led by Bartlow asks that Alicia hand over Sori. Bartlow tells her that his power is enormous and would be better served under their control. Alicia refuses and announces that she has no intention of handing over the shepherd. Sore and the Seraphim walk around the ruins. They come up to a wall and wonder how to get through it. Miklia wonders where the door is and touches a latch that brings out a seal with the mark of the Highland royal family. Sore recalls that he still has Alicia's knife and tries the knife in the seal, the door opens and the three adventurers go through it. As they explore the underground network, Sore sees the statue of a dragon and panics, but Macleo points out that it is only a statue. Macleo talks about the legends of the dragons and wonders if it's the statue causing the malevolence, but Lila replies that it is not. She senses something else. Suddenly a swarm of bats appears, and they realize that it is a hellion-sized swarm. The bats attack them, and they jump away in time. Mikleo attacks the bats, which disperses the swarm, and Sore adds his attack. Lila burns them and purifies some of the bats. The swarm attacks Mikleo, knocking him back, and then they reach for him again. Sore jumps in front of him, making the bats retreat. Lila asks that Sore disperse the swarm again, which Sore does, and then she uses a spell to purify the swarm of bats. The three of them gather to talk about how they had defeated the bats, and Layla tells Sori that she can help him by going inside him whenever he wishes. She shows him, and then speaks to him from inside him, and he reacts in shock. She reappears and tells him that he can also enter packs with other Seraphim. She lets him know that the pact with the Seraphim would make him more powerful but would cost him much. Mikleo alerts Sore to the malevolence still in the ruins. They decide to go deeper inside the ruins and search out the malevolence. Sore is shocked when they find the corpses of many people. Layla explains that it was the true nature of the ruins, and that those corpses were those who rebelled against the rulers. Sore looks at the knife of the royal family and wonders if Alicia is aware of the true nature of the ruins. Layla assures him that she is not, and then she tells him of the true goal of a shepherd, which is to purify the Lord of Calamity and the cause of all malevolence. Layla assures Sori that he still has much to learn before encountering the Lord of Calamity, and would be consumed by malevolence if he faced the Lord of Calamity as he is. She encourages him to come up with his answer to the truth, and something he would not regret. Mikleo tells him not to think so hard about his answer, and just then they notice water in the hall. Lila asks that they leave, as the gushing water increases. Mikleo uses his ability to freeze the surface, but it cannot hold for long, and they run away from the chamber. As they run, Sore trips but lands safely, and is about to be crushed by the statue of the dragon, but Mikleo helps him again. They run outside to see a crazy storm. They know that it is not normal, and notice the Helion in the clouds. Alicia and Maltran discuss Alicia's stubbornness, and her refusal to go with the directions of the city council. She apologizes to Maltran for her stubbornness, and Maltran assures Alicia that she believes in her leadership, but tells her of Bartlow's goal, which is not even the shepherd but to get rid of Alicia. Maltran tells her of Bartlow's plans for her, and reminds her not to be engulfed in the matters of the state, as she is worried about her. Alicia notices the storm and rushes out to see the growing tornado. The Hellion who attacked Elysia also watches from the top of a tower, and Rose, the leader of the Sparrow Feathers struggles with her caravan to secure their goods. One thousand years before Sori was born, and the events of the Shepherd saving the world from malevolence, back when the continent was still known as Besteria, and not Zesteria as it is known now, a young girl named Velvet Crow languished in prison. She is attacked by a daemon, and she kills the demon in no time and consumes it due to her ability as a demon eater. Another daemon attacks her, and she kills it too. She collapses after killing the daemon, and then convulses from the pain. She recalls how she came to be in the state she found herself, and emphasizes her hatred for one man, Artorius. Her cell door opens, and a Moloch joins her. She tries to consume the Moloch but cannot as the Moloch burns her hands. The Moloch teases her for her hatred of Artorius, 
and she asks for the location of Artorias. The Malak tells her to hurry if she must escape as she had helped her in coming to free her. Velvet throws the Malak off, but the Malak lands gracefully without a scratch. The Malak then calls down a ladder that Velvet uses to get back up. They reach up to see some exorcists. The Malak attacks them, but they fend off her attack with ease. Then Velvet gets into close combat with them and knocks them all down. They run away from there and the Malak leads Velvet toward the exit, but Velvet runs in the opposite direction. The Malak wonders why, and Velvet replies that she is not stupid to run towards the danger that awaits her there. They go into a strange room where Velvet equips herself with weapons. The Malak and Velvet discuss the plans to escape from the prison, and Velvet grabs a sword she saw. The Malak comments on her choice of the sword, and Velvet replies that the sword is useless if she cannot make use of it. The Malak then asks if she is interested in knowing what happened to the world during her time in prison. The Malak tells her of the growing number of exorcists in the world and the resistance against the daemons. Velvet is not interested in the state of the world and threatens the Malak into telling her the whereabouts of Artorias. Velvet heads towards the door and the Malak reminds her of the enemy behind the door. She makes Velvet recall the night she got her powers and how her brother had died. The Malak, whose name is Ceres, tells Velvet that the world had changed after Artorias completed his ritual that had caused the death of Velvet's brother. Malakim had come into the world, and with the exorcists, put a stop to the demons. Ceres shares how Artorias had gained recognition for his efforts as the leader of the exorcists, and the world respects him, but she assures Velvet that Artorius can be killed. Velvet reminds her that she belongs to Artorius, calling her name Ceres the Malak. Ceres replies that she will tell her story once they escape the prison. They hear a sound, and Ceres puts out the light, and they both hide. They see a man walk in and search for something, then supposedly walk out. They come out of hiding, and the man appears behind Velvet and secures her arm. He also presses a blade to her throat, but Velvet is not afraid. Velvet reminds him that they are both escaped prisoners, and the man leaves her alone. The man steps back and talks about his escape. Then Ceres mentions that he is a demon, but the man is not offended and teases them for not being much different. The man tells them that he has to find his partner before his escape, and suddenly sees his partner, Stormhowl, in Velvet's hands, and goes for it. Velvet steps back and looks at the sword in her hands. The man demands that she return the sword, but she refuses, and the man takes up a fighting stance. She asks if he can use the sword, and if he is good against exorcists, to which he replies that he is quite good. Then she tells him that he can get it back if he agrees to a deal. The man, whose name is Rokuru, agrees to the deal, and they make plans on how to escape the prison. Velvet asks Ceres about a ship, as the prison is on an island. She had gotten the information from the demons she had killed. Ceres tells her that her ship is docked safely, and Velvet wonders if an exorcist would have taken over her ship. Velvet suggests that they take down as many of the exorcists as they can. Then they sneak around inside the prison, avoiding those they can. They head to solitary confinement, where Velvet hopes to release lots of prisoners and create chaos. As they reach the solitary confinement area, Velvet reminds Rokuru to keep to his word and commends him for being someone who can fit in with chaos. Just then, two exorcists appear and attack them, but Velvet and Rokuru go forward and kill them with swift moves. She thinks about how good he is as Rokuru complains about the blade he had used, which was dull. Rokuru tells them to go ahead, and Velvet orders Ceres to release the prisoners. She does so, and Rokuru leads the prisoners to create more chaos in the prison, allowing Ceres and Velvet to head to the port. They get to the top of the tower, and Ceres tells them to head back as Velvet would not survive falling from the top of the tower. They hear the rushing feet of the exorcists, and Ceres uses her power to hold the door in place, preventing the exorcists from coming to meet them. Velvet looks at how far she has to jump and recalls her brother's death. The anger she has against Artorias fuels her, and she makes the jump, using her Daemon Eater hand to break her fall. She lands badly and sees that she has injured her shoulders. Ceres is shocked at her determination and then joins her. Ceres heals her injury, commending her strength and comparing her strength to that obtained by forming a contract. The contract grants special power but limits one's words. They turn to leave and hear a ship heading to the island. Ceres checks it out and announces that it is a Praetor-class ship. They wonder if Artorias is on the ship. Ceres tells Velvet that their troubles have only increased, as the Praetors are more powerful than those they have been fighting. On the ship, Oscar, a vassal of Artorias, anticipates the battle he will have with Velvet. Ceres and Velvet walk down to the docks, the anger in Velvet growing, and Ceres wonders if her anger is good for the world or would result in more malevolence. Velvet and Ceres walk along the beach to reach the docks while Oscar watches from the window of his ship. Another escape prisoner, Magalu, 
flies around on her floating carpet. Velvet and Ceres arrive at the docks to see the exorcists unloading, and Ceres notices that it is Oscar on the ship. She heads down to speak with him, commending him for coming to the island as one of the best exorcists. Oscar assures her that it is because it is important to Artorius. He talks about her betrayal, and then Velvet joins them. Oscar is undeterred by her appearance, and Velvet replies that she will take his ship and kill Artorius. The exorcists become angry at her statement, but Oscar tells them to stand down and launches an attack on her himself. He dares her to fight against him if she intends to oppose Artorius, letting her know that he would treat her fairly as a woman. However, she picks up a stone and throws it at his soldier, knocking one of them far back into the ocean. He changes his approach and announces that he will treat her like a demon eater. He gives his name as he approaches her, and with a burst of speed, he attacks her. However, the ladies jump away in time. Velvet proves to be equal to him and blocks his strikes while making her own. She pushes him and sees an opening she exploits, but before she can pull it off, Oscar disappears and reappears behind her, knocking her back into the water with a long-range attack. She immediately jumps out of the water, and Oscar speaks to her, telling her that he has not come to kill her but to help her back to her prison state. He reminds her of her role as a demon eater, and she agrees, but tells him that her goal has always been to kill Artorius. Oscar explains how everyone's role has been assigned, and she asks if her brother's role is to serve as a sacrifice. Oscar answers that it is, adding that Artorius had shown the world that everyone has a role. Velvet refuses to accept his argument, and Oscar asks if she would not go freely to her cell. They watch each other, waiting for the other to attack, and suddenly, a dragon shows up overhead. They watch the dragon flying overhead, and Oscar wonders what the dragon is doing there. He tells his exorcist to open fire on the dragon, but the dragon dodges the fire and scatters the exorcist before flying back up. Oscar curses the dragon, calling it a demon, but Ceres doubts that the dragon is a demon. He explains that it is a result of human malevolence. The dragon approaches again, and he attacks the dragon, but it dodges the attack and destroys their ship. Oscar asks Ceres if she still doubts Artorius's good intentions for the world after seeing the might of the dragon. Ceres replies that she will forge her path as the dragons fight the exorcists. As Scar runs towards it and strikes it, Velvet watches the fight and remembers the other ship. She turns to leave when Magalu appears behind her and accuses her of disturbing her sleep. Magalu sees the dragons and gets frustrated with all the disturbance but acts unserious about it. Velvet watches as Oscar and the exorcists hold down the dragon with a spell, and she runs towards the ship, telling Maltran that it is her opportunity to get off the island. Magalu agrees with her. Oscar prepares another spell that would call forth his Malak, but before he can complete it, the exorcists holding down the dragon collapse from exhaustion, and the spell holding the dragon dissipates. The dragon breaks free and spots Velvet heading toward the ship, then launches an attack on her, sending her flying backward. The dragon injures her again with another attack, but Velvet refuses to back down. As the dragon prepares to attack Velvet again, Ceres appears and shields her from it. She tells Velvet that there is no way to defeat Artorius, but as she speaks, the dragon prepares an Arte, a powerful attack that shatters Ceres' shield and heads towards Velvet. Ceres uses her body to protect Velvet, and both of them are knocked back into the prison by the powerful attack. Magalu attacks the dragon out of anger, saying he doesn't know how to operate a ship and would help Velvet. Rokuru also appears and slashes at the dragon, offering his help. Magalu thanks him for the help and introduces herself. Velvet walks up and sees Ceres injured from the attack by the dragon. Ceres tells her what to do to be able to defeat Artorius. She convinces Velvet to consume her and take her powers. Velvet asks why Ceres would go that far to help her, and Ceres shows her a comb that belongs to Lafacet. Velvet's brother. Ceres tells her to hurry before she dies, and Velvet does as she bids, consuming Ceres with her demon eater powers. As she does so, she recalls her brother and screams in agony. Ceres disappears, and a ring appears in her place, which Velvet grabs and puts on. Meanwhile, Magalu and Rokuru are having a hard time with the dragon. Magalu is knocked back, and Rokuru holds the dragon with two short swords while Velvet runs out of the prison with burning anger. She launches a fire attack on the dragon, and Oscar realizes that she has eaten Ceres and gained Ceres's Arte. Velvet knocks the dragon down and starts consuming the dragon. Oscar refuses to allow her to go free with it and attacks her. Velvet simply gives her name and declares that she will consume all monsters, exorcists, and demons in the world before causing a blast that throws Oscar away. Rokuru sails the ship that was not destroyed and asks the ladies where they are headed. Magalu replies that she has no destination and will go where the ship goes. Velvet looks at the comb Ceres gave her and thinks back about her brother. 
she looks at a bird flying in the sky and recalls a time she had asked her brother about it. She also remembers when Artorius had sacrificed her brother, claiming it to be a way to stop the pain and disorder in the world, and that he would be the savior who stopped the pain. She had cried out in anger when Artorius had caused the death of her brother, and she became the Daemon Eater. Velvet tells Rokarau to head to the Midgond region, as she is going to Logress, the capital of the kingdom. Magalu announces that she has no idea how it will turn out, but is glad as the unknown is what makes life interesting. Back in the present, Sori alerts Mikleo and Layla to the Hellion inside the tornado. It is a dragon. Alicia observes the storm, and Maltran tries to get her to get back inside the castle, but Alicia wants to find out what happened to the guards. Many houses were destroyed as the tornado headed towards the castle, and Sori worries about Alicia. Alicia orders the guards to help the people and guide anyone who wants to evacuate inside the castle. Maltran notices that Sori is standing in front of the moving tornado, but she doesn't realize that Sori's standing with the Seraphim. Alicia also sees Sori, and she becomes happy. Sori watches the dragon, and suddenly the dragon takes off into the distance. The sky clears, and Miklia wonders if they are safe. Sore asks Lila if the dragon was created from malevolence, and she replies that she thinks so, but is shocked at seeing an actual dragon. Alicia calls Sori as she runs out of the castle to thank him for saving them from the storm, and Sori doesn't know what to say. Mikleo tells him to look towards the city, and he sees that several of the citizens are gathered outside and praising him for saving them. He doesn't know how to address them, and Bartlow appears, speaking to Sore. The people shut up immediately, and Bartlow thanks Sore for saving the people of the city from the dragon. Sore assures him that he did not do anything. Bartlow requests that Sore join him for dinner at his estate, and Alicia wonders what Bartlow intends to do. Bartlow assures her that he has no ill intentions towards the shepherd, and Sore accepts his request, which Bartlow announces to the people. Later, Sore heads to Bartlow's residence and tells the princess to stop the cart. They come outside to see the ruins and the damage the dragon caused, and the people bow in reverence to Sori. Sori points out the anguish in the people to Layla, but she replies that Lady Lake is not yet completely overrun with malevolence, although they are short of time to solve the issues. They get to Bartlow's residence, and the servant tells Alicia to head to the palace as the king requires her presence. Layla comments on the fact that Bartlow does not want Alicia to be present, and Sore assures Alicia that he would be okay. During the meal, Bartlow asks Sore about his relationship with Alicia, and Sore answers that they are just friends. Bartlow is shocked and asks if they could be friends also. Bartlow asks that they toast and then grabs his drink. As Sore reaches for his drink, Mikleo tastes it and confirms that it is safe before Sore drinks from it. Bartlow brags about the drink, and then Sore asks what he had asked to see him for. Bartlow asks for his plans for the future, and Sore tells him that he will go after the dragon. Bartlow asks about his plans after defeating the dragon and Sore tells him he intends to make the world a better place. After the dinner, Sore went back to the location of the damaged house and saw Alicia helping the people. She tells him of her mission to go to Marland, and Sore asks if Bartlow has influenced it. She assures him that with or without Bartlow, she would have gone to the city to help the people who are afflicted by the plague. Bartlow discusses with his servant about their plans for the kingdom and their preparation for war against Rolands. That night, Mikleo watches Sori sleeping and asks Layla if he can discuss something with her. They go outside to talk about Sore. Mikleo is concerned about how fast Sore is growing as the shepherd, and Layla wonders if Mikleo worries that Sore is growing distant. Mikleo is unsure about where the problems lie, and Lila asks about his intentions, and he replies that he is not sure what he has to do. He shares how he had left home with Sore so that they could explore the world together. Lila asks if he wants to go back home, and Mikleo replies that he cannot leave Sore. Lila tells him what he can do for Sore. That very night, Mikleo leaves the castle and heads out into the night. The next morning, Sore is confused as to why Mikleo would leave him and go alone. He wonders what Mikleo would do if a Hellion appeared, and in his confusion, he knocks down some stuff. That allowed him to think about it and conclude that Mikleo must have a strong reason for leaving. Lila asks if he is, sure he does, not want to go after Mikleo, and Sore replies that there are things he has to do as the shepherd. As Mikleo walks along the road, he recalls what Lila had shared with him. She told him to head north after leaving Laddie Lake to a large lake where he could find the Galahad ruins, which house a legendary artifact. The artifact is like the sacred blade to her, and with it, they would be able to help Sore. Sore checks on Alicia as she prepares to go to a blind, and he gives her back her knife. She thanks him for the knife, and then asks him to accompany them part of the way as their guard. Sore agrees, and the party sets out. As they go on, Sore thinks back to what Lila had told him about the Rayfalk spirit crest where dragons had appeared in ancient times. Through the forest, the party encounters Trangalongs, and Alicia explains to Sore that the Trangalongs are unique to the forest and are gentle creatures. Mikleo walks through the forest and notices the presence of something trailing him. He hears footsteps and runs, 
then turns suddenly and attacks, but nothing is there. Suddenly he notices multiple presences following him, and he runs forward. He gets to the edge of a cliff and is unable to stop, then falls off the cliff. He lands in the forest below and rolls down the slope until he rests at the base of a tree. Alicia brings a drink for Sori, and she asks if Layla is not going to eat. Sori tells her that Layla is fine with not eating. She then offers Layla a drink. Layla takes Sori's hands and tells him to hold Alicia also, so she can offer her gratitude herself. Alicia is glad to hear Layla's voice, and suddenly they hear the panic in the camp. They run out, and Alicia sees a Trangalong attacking a soldier. But Sori sees that it is a Hellion attacking the soldier. He runs forward and attacks the Hellion, purifying it and saving the Trangalong. Afterward, the company continues towards Marlene, and Alicia tells Sori about the city. She is, however, worried that they would not be of much help to the city as the plague in the city is so bad. Alicia then asks about Sore's past. Sori tells her of how he was saved by Gramps and raised by the Seraphim and has lived in Elysia ever since then. She praises Gramps, and Sori adds that the Seraphim are covered by his blessing. Alicia wonders if Sore is human, and he assures her that he is. She asks him to teach her more about the Seraphim, and he tells her the tales of the Seraphim from the Celestial Record. The Seraphim are beings of air, water, fire, and earth, supporting the land, the air, and all of life. He told her of how the Seraphim are affiliated with one element or the other, and that Mikleo's affinity is to water as Lila's is to fire. She is sad that humans can no longer see or hear the Seraphim, and wonders if that is how the Age of Chaos came to be. Sori explains how the world began to doubt and fight each other, leading to the growth of Chaos. He tells her that the malevolence will continue to grow, and the calamities in the world will get worse. She reminds him of his dream and tells him that he wasn't lonely in Elysia, despite being the only human there. Sore recalls that he had never felt lonely all through his time in Elysia because he had Mikleo with him. After Sore and Alicia say their farewells as their roots begin to differ, Mikleo gets to the lake and recalls some moments with Sore. He declares that he will not let Sore beat him. Sore also gets close to the mountain range and marvels at the sight, while Mikleo climbs several steps to get to the top of a hill. He declares that he beat Sore just as Sore declared when he got to the mountain that he beat Mikleo. That night, Mikleo looks up at the sky and watches the stars. Lila comments to Sore that Mikleo must be doing the same thing where he is. Sore thinks back on their childhood as they study a painting of the legends of the Seraphim. Mikleo jumps into the lake surrounding the Galaxy had ruins, and sees a door toward which he heads. Sori feels the growing malevolence in the mountain range, and Layla warns that they should be careful. They hear a loud sound and see a parasol flying down the slope towards them. Then a girl is thrown back towards them. Sore catches the girl, and she asks him if he would not drop her down. Lila recognizes the Seraph Edna, and they exchange pleasantries. Then Edna tells Sore that he will die if he does not move. They jump in time as a Hellion attacks them. Edna uses her Earth-manipulating ability to knock the Hellion back. She tells Lila and Sore that she had come to check on something about getting in a fight with a Hellion. Another Seraph watches them from afar. Sori goes to thank Edna for dealing with the Hellion and Edna tells him it's not over yet, as the Hellion stands up again. Sori tells Layla to help him as he attacks the Hellion. Edna comments on him being the Shepherd, as Sore continues to fight the Hellion with Lila's help. Sore is surprised that his attacks aren't working against the Hellion, and Lila explains that his malevolence is too strong. As they prepare to go against the Hellion again, a shot rings out, and the Hellion collapses and then dies, surprising Sore. Zavide, another Seraph, appears and mocks Sore for being too weak against the Hellion. Lila recognizes him, but Edna is unconcerned. Edna goes to sit down, while Sori and Zavid argue on the morality of killing a Hellion. Sori is against killing as he believes that they can be saved, and Zavid says, that Hellions belong in Hell. Layla explains that Zavid has a divine artifact that allows him to kill Hellions. Zavid explains that death could be a form of salvation for the Hellions, and Layla is unsure of how to defuse the situation. Edna gets up and tells Zavid to leave, but he replies that he will not leave until he has killed her brother. Just then, they could feel the malevolence in the air growing. A dragon appears and lands before them. Edna calls the dragon her brother, and Zavade confirms it to be true. The dragon is Edna's brother, Aizen. Zavade warns Sori to get out of the way of the dragon, before he becomes dragon food. But Sori explains that the dragon can be purified, because it used to be a Sarapsh. Layla tells him that it is impossible, and Zavade saves Sore dragging him out of the way before the dragon crushes him. Zavid screams that a full-grown dragon cannot be purified, 
and Lila confirms it. Sore is sad that they will not be able to help the dragon, and Edna says that there is nothing that could be done, as she has tried everything that could be done. Zaved goes in front of the dragon and aims his gun at the dragon, but before he can shoot, Edna creates a wall of earth blocking the shot from reaching the dragon. The dragon instead turns to attack Edna, but Sore gets to him in time. Zaved shoots at the dragon and screams at them to get Edna out of the way before facing the dragon. Mikleo gets to where the divine artifact is kept and stands before it, a mighty bow, but as he reaches for it, three Hellions appear. He uses his water ability to attack them, but his power is not enough, and he retreats from them. Then he picks up the bow and kills them with it. The dragon flies around the mountain ranges looking for the Seraphim and Sori. Edna teases Sori and then asks him what he's doing out in the mountain range. Sori answers that they had followed the legend of the dragons, and Edna teases him again about wanting to gain fame by killing a dragon. Lila assures her that it wasn't so, but that they were looking for the dragon that appeared in the city. Edna tells them that it was not her brother, and asks them again why they had come. Sore tells her about his dream and how he intends to learn about the world, since he is the shepherd. Edna tells him to live, having learned about the might of the dragon, but Sore tells her that he is wondering if dragons can be saved. Edna is shocked by Sore's honesty, and Layla defends him. Sore asks Edna how her brother became a dragon, but she isn't sure how it happened. She tells them that her brother loves humans. Edna says she had been looking for a way to save her brother for a long time but has not seen anything that could help. Then she declares that she would have to kill her brother. Saray scolds her for the thought, reminding her that she had stopped Zavade from killing her brother which shows that she still wishes her brother would be saved. She looks at Sore and sees the honesty in his eyes. Just then they hear the sound of battle and run towards it. Zavade is fighting the dragon, and they watch as Zavade and the dragon battle. Sore calls out to Zavade, and Zavade reminds them that Izan is no longer human and cannot be purified. He recalls the fights he had with Izan, who was his longtime friend. Edna pleads with her brother to stop, and Sore asks Layla to help him. She reminds him that dragons cannot be purified, and he tells her that he cannot let it be that way and that he has to do something. He transforms into a shepherd and attacks the dragon. He knocks the dragon down, but the dragon gets back up, and they continue fighting, while Edna recalls moments from her past that she had with her brother. Zaved joins the attack, and the dragon faces both Sore and Zaved. Edna continues reminiscing as the dragon slaps Sore away with its tail. The dragon roars and readies to attack Sore, who has fallen, but Edna jumps close to the dragon and pleads with her brother to stop. Zaved screams at her to get away from there, but Edna remains and calls her brother. The dragon smashed the rock on which she stood and was about to roast her with fire. Sori screams and dashes forward to help her just as Zavade rushes to catch her too. The dragon's eyes turn towards Edna, and it stops the attack, allowing Sori to save her. The dragon then flies away into the distance. Edna watches the setting sun, and Sore goes to meet Zavade to learn more about Aizen. Zavade lets Sore know that he has never heard anything about bringing a dragon back but does not discourage them. He tells Edna to let him know when she wants her brother dead before leaving. Edna comments on Zavid leaving them, and then goes to meet Layla and Sori. She tells Layla that she wants a sublord contract with Sori. She explains to Sori that since he wants to help her brother, she would help him. She asks if he is truly going to help her brother, and he replies that he will. They share the anticipation they have towards working together. Alicia and Maltran encounter an overflowing river, and they also see that the bridge they would take to get to Marlene is broken. Alicia consults the map and finds a route, which she takes along with some of her men. Edna reminds Sore that he promised to save her brother, and Sore agrees. Meanwhile, Mikleo is back from his mission and notices a darkening cloud, worrying for Sore. Edna questions Sore about his plans and mocks him for not being focused. Layla assures Edna that Sore considers the celestial record a holy book. Sore adds that Rolance, the neighboring kingdom to Highland, contains shrines that saw the dragons as gods. He mentions his desire to travel the world and learn, having made provisions for failure in his quest. Lila reminds Sore of his recent activities of purifying Hellionized creatures and asks him what purification means to him. Edna mocks him for not knowing what purification means despite being the shepherd. Layla assures him that he will encounter different kinds of Hellions in his travels, but might be swallowed in malevolence if he keeps going after Hellions the way he is. She guides him, then simulates a Hellion out of fire, and asks him to purify it. She tells him to imagine the fire as a Hellion and purify it. But Sori is unable to do so, and the more he tries, the larger the fire grows. Layla stops it, and Sori collapses in exhaustion. She also reminds him that he would have to work on purifying Hellionized humans. Layla thinks of Sori's growth and capabilities as the Shepherd, hoping Mikleo joins them as soon as he can. Meanwhile, Mikleo takes a nap in the forest and sees a Norman Seraph in danger. He helps the Norman Seraph 
but his attack does not stop the Hellion chasing the Norman Seraph. The Norman Seraph fuses with him, boosting his powers and allowing him to launch an attack that sends the Hellion flying into the distance. The Norman Seraph drinks from the stream and is happy to be alive, then thanks Macleo for helping him. The Norman Seraph introduces itself as Atak and commends Macleo for knowing about the Norman Seraph. Macleo replies that he learned from his foster father, and they talk about the Norman Seraph. Macleo advises Atak to leave as his home is no longer safe for him, and Atak agrees. He asks Macleo where he is off, and Macleo answers that he is going to where the strange cloud is gathered to see his friend. Atak decides to go with Macleo until he finds a place to settle, and it would be a great idea to work together to beat the Hellions they encounter on the road, and then they shake on their partnership. Sori and the Seraph get to the crossroad, where he meets some soldiers who give him a message from Alicia, and also a horse to speed him up on his way. Alicia had traveled until she got to a place and saw the strange storm gathering behind her. She led her soldiers to a broken bridge but found a path with little current they could use to cross the river, and they took it. Meanwhile, Maltren gives orders to the remaining soldiers when the rain suddenly begins. The storm increases and blows the soldiers away. Sore complains about the rain, and then Lila alerts him to the presence of the dragon in the storm. He gets to where Maltran is, helps her, and then faces the storm. Lila tells him to go after the dragon while she helps the people. Sori calls Edna, and they fuse to attack the dragon with a powerful punch, but the dragon counters and knocks Sori back. Suddenly, a drake appears and fights the dragon. Sori is shocked, and Edna explains that a drake is not yet a dragon. Layla tells Sori to hurry after the drake as it can still be purified. Sori uses an attack on the dragon and a base to attack the drake, but the drake, seeing Sori coming after him, flies so far up that Sori cannot follow, and Sori falls back to the earth. Maltran thanks Sori for coming to their help, and he asks after Alicia. She tells him that Alicia has taken another route to Marland. Layla adds that the drake had gone off in the direction of the city. Sori asks Edna if there is anything she can do about the bridge, and she she complains that she has run out of power. Later, Sori fuses with Edna and builds a makeshift bridge so that he can get across it. Mikleo and Atak talk about Lila as they walk towards the river. Atak complains that they wouldn't be able to cross the river but sees a bridge that has been constructed for the soldiers. He heads over to where the soldiers are and listens, since they cannot see him. He hears Maltran attribute the bridge to Sore, who was with them earlier. Atak jumps on Sore and tells him that his friend is waiting for him. Sori gets to Marland and sees the state of the city due to the plague. He is sad about the state of things, and Edna compares the malevolence to her brother's domain. Sori says that the plague is caused by the drake just as the drake flies over the city. Alicia helps the patients and the infected in the city, but nothing seems to be working. She gives them hope of a cure but has doubts herself. As she walks down the corridor of the castle, Sore meets with her and introduces Edna to her. Sore is shocked that Alicia could hear Edna without him holding her hands, and Lila comments on Sore's sensory resonance improvement. Alicia greets Lila, and then breaks down at her failure to provide care for the people. She worries that the people of the city will die, and Sore promises to tackle the source of the problem for her. Just then, the drake flies overhead, and Sore feels it. Alicia wonders if a Hellion is around, and Sore confirms it. He asks Alicia what lies in the direction the drake flies towards, and she tells him. Sori and the Seraphim head towards the drake, and Sori tells Edna to trap it. Edna uses a gravity spell to hold the drake down, and Sori readies to attack it, but the drake breaks free of the spell and flees away. Mikleo heeds forward to meet Sore and feels a growing malevolence. He sees a drake fighting in the distance and knows that Sore is fighting the drake. He encounters a Hellion and screams, and then attack fuses with him. He kills the Hellion and turns to leave but sees many more of the Hellions. Sori battles the drake, and Layla wishes that Macleo was with them, as he has the long-range attack capability. She tells Sori that Macleo went to get a divine artifact, a bow, and with that, they would reach the drake in the sky. Sore assures her Macleo will come as he is nearby and tells her to hold on a little longer. They attack the drake one more time, but the drake knocks them back causing them to separate. The drake tries to kill Lila, who is on the ground, and Sarai rushes to protect her, when suddenly an arrow pierces the fire from the drake, dispersing it. Sori sees Macleo running towards them, and Layla recognizes Atak. Layla then screams that Macleo forms a sublord contract with Sore. She recites the spell and tells Macleo to give his true name to Sore, who is fighting the Drake. Sore already knows Macleo's true name and calls it as they fuse. Sore evolves to a superior form that amazes Atak. The Drake comes again, 
and Sore fires a powerful shot at the drake that purifies it, and also clears the malevolence surrounding the city. The boys separate and laugh at their deed, then they shake at it. Sore tells Miklio that he knew he would come, and Miklio teases him about not being able to do anything without him. Miklio comments on Sore's strength, and they shake on it again. Edna and Layla discuss Sore's actions and how hardworking he is. Layla adds that purifying the water supply would rid the city of the plague. Sore and Miklio go through the water network of the city of Marlene, and they purify the water using a purification spell. They worry that their work is still ongoing as the water continues to flow, and they continue the purification as they have been doing for three days. Mikleo says that he would help him for one month, and they continue their task. Later, Layla and Edna tease Sore about his role as a shepherd. As they walk, the people of the city greet Sore, and he responds to them. Sore and the Seraphim go to the library, and Mikleo and Edna argue about something. Lila scolds them for arguing, and Sore asks the Seraphim in charge of the town, Rohan, how he is feeling. Rohan had been the drake that plagued Marland after he was consumed by malevolence. Lila tries to reassure him, and Sore asks him how it all happened. Rohan replies that he cannot recall, although it was something trivial that caused the entire thing to escalate. Atak adds that he had seen a whole village disappear over something so small. Rohan comments on the Norman Seraph's presence, and says that the city used to be full of them. Atak says that there is a Norman Seraph in every village, just as there is a Seraph in every city. Alicia brings a meal for Sore, and asks to join him, and he accepts. She thanks him for the water treatment, and he assures her that the purification will be complete in about a year. She thanks the Seraphim present in the room, although she cannot see them, and asks that they continue to lend their aid to humanity. Edna and Mikleo comment about Sore's hard-working nature. Atak drinks the soup Alicia brought and screams that it is hot. Alicia also asks Sore to help with the supplies they could use in rebuilding the city. Sore helps distribute the supplies, and when he is done, he sees Alicia addressing the soldiers. Edna and Miklio comment on Alicia's hardworking nature, and then they notice the sparrow feathers bringing food to the city from Lady Lake. Rose teases Alicia for attending to the supplies even though she is the princess. Alicia says she has heard good things about the sparrow feathers, and offers to shake Rose's hand. Just then, Sore joins them and greets her. Rose reminds him of his debt, and teases him for becoming the Lord Shepherd and not having money to pay for his debt. She wonders if Alicia would help him as his friend, but says that she is kidding. Rose takes the supplies and moves to where they are needed, but passes Maltran on the way as Maltran heads to where Alicia is. Schiller has just come from the capital, and bears a message for the princess, but is worried about Sore. Alicia assures Schiller that Sore is with her, and Schiller delivers her message. Bartlow has led the troops toward war against the people of Rollins. Alicia pours over the maps and wonders what to do about the war that Bartlow is in Exciting. They all discuss Bartlow's intentions and plans, and Schiller adds that the second wave of the army is mustering from the city at the moment. Alicia decides to go and stop them, and Sore says that he will go with her. Lila advises him against it, but Sore tries to convince her. She asks him if he knows what it truly means to be consumed by malevolence, and tells him what a battle is like. They go into a dark alley, when they feel the presence of a Hellion. Layla explains that it is a Hellionized human, and Sore describes the feeling he is having. They get to the house where the Hellionized human is and open the door. Sore sees the Hellionized human and is surprised. Lila guides him to see the Hellion clearly, and Sore does. Then she tells him to purify it. He attacks the Hellion and strikes at it, then has a flash of memory from the Hellion, which makes him weak and falls. Mikleo screams in concern for him, and Lila screams that he cannot let the Hellion harm the city. Sori goes after the Hellion and strikes again. He feels the memory flash but manages to purify the human. Layla explains that purifying a human means accepting the person's malevolence into the shepherd, and the worst is only Sore can do it as he is the shepherd. The Seraphim are sad that they cannot help him, and Sore gets up to go, saying that it is not over yet. Alicia's men prepare for war, and she consults with her officers about how to move the troops and supplies to the battlefront. As they discuss, Alicia receives a message from a soldier and gives him another order. She gives her final orders to her officers and steps out of the room, where she sees Maltran with her spear. Maltran promises to follow Alicia to the battlefield and support her, and Alicia shows her appreciation before leaving. Later, Sori goes to the graveyard, and the Seraphim follows him. Edna and Mikleo talk about Sori's determined walk, and then Edna teases Mikleo. Sori stops in front of a grave, saying it is the grave of the person murdered by the Hellionized person. He purifies the spirit of the dead person and explains what happened to the Seraphim. Alicia comments on the absence of her guards, and suddenly she is surrounded by the members of the Scattered Bones, the Assassin Organization. Saray and the Seraphim watch as a woman mourns the death of her loved one, 
and add that grief leads to hatred which causes malevolence. The leader of the assassins addresses the princess and commends her courage. Alicia answers that she wishes she were a regular princess. One of the assassins attacks, and she knocks him back. She tells the leader of the assassins that she is going to stop the war and asks the assassins to come for her or let her be. The leader of the assassins questions her every decision regarding the war and she answers without a hint of fear. The leader of the assassins attacks her, and she continues to share her beliefs about the war. The assassin holds a knife to her neck and dares the assassin to kill her. When the assassin sees her resolve, the assassin stops and tries to walk away. The princess tells her to stop and threatens her for attacking the princess of a kingdom. The assassin wonders what the princess intends for her, and the princess invites her to go with her to the battlefield and witness her actions. The princess walks towards her and slashes at her mask, revealing the leader of the Scattered Bones to be Rose, the leader of the merchant band, the Sparrow Feathers. Alicia asks her to provide food and supplies, and Rose commends her bravery, accepting the request on behalf of the Sparrow Feathers. Alicia adds that if she dies, she is to aim for forgiveness and not allow hatred to spread. Alicia orders her to tell everyone that she does not seek revenge, and Rose accepts the orders, vowing to do as she asks. The two leaders walk away in opposite directions as they prepare to head to the battlefield the next day. Meanwhile, Layla asks Sori if he is determined to go to the battlefield, despite not knowing exactly what it means to purify a human, and Sori replies that it is exactly why he must go to the battlefield. Sori and the Seraphim ask Rohan to be the protector he once was, and he promises to do so. Edna teases Rohan, but he assures them that he will have Atak with him to prevent any mishaps. Atak then pledges to do a great job. Just then Alicia joins them and asks Sore if he is ready for them to go to war. She leads her men towards the battlefield and explains to Sore the situation of things. They are nowhere comparable to the army they are going to stop. She had shared her plans with her generals and Rose as part of her team. She tells them how she intends to stop the war, and Maltrin advises her on certain matters. As they ride on, Ian, a scout, joins them and exchanges greetings with the princess and with Schiller, whom she has known since childhood. Ian and Schiller tease each other for a while, and the princess comments on their closeness. Ian adds that she had hunted a wild boar for the princess's supper, and the princess commends her for her skills. Ian notices Sore, and she goes to meet him. She teases Sore about being different from the rumors, and tells him some of the rumors being spread about him. She requested that he shake her hand, which he did, and she very happily promised not to wash her hands again. The seraphim watches as she fawns over Sore and comments on her behavior. The princess reminds Ian to give her a report, which she does. She adds that the total number of soldiers isn't as they had heard, but is more. Rose's second-in-command asks her about their decision to join the battle, and Rose answers that she cannot back out now that she has given her word. They tease the princess for her ideals and laugh over it. The general of the Highland army plans his move with his generals as Alicia moves her men closer and closer to the battleground. At night, Alicia takes a walk and Sori asks her about it. They find out they couldn't sleep, and they go to the stream where they discuss the battle they are going to face. Alicia shares her fears, and Sori tells her what he intends to do regarding the war. She apologizes for dragging him into the war, and Sori tells her that he cannot take the side of any kingdom when the war begins, and she replies that she understands. Mikleo calls Sori and confirms their meeting the next day. He reminds Sori of their time in Elysia, and Sori accuses Mikleo of getting emotional. They worry about Gramps and laugh at the thought of worrying about him. Mikleo suggests they go exploring after the war, and Sore agrees, then they shake on it. Edna and Lila discuss the war the next day, and Lila says that she wants Sore to be more experienced before facing the realities of war. The next day, the war begins in earnest, after Roland's forces attack Highland soldiers from the rear. They report to General Landon, and he becomes enraged about it, while one of the Roland's generals has a falling out with the others over the sneak attack. He is honorable, and refuses to be counted as a villain by his enemies. He leaves the general, and refuses to join in the plans. Alicia and her soldiers camp close to the battlefield, and are angry that they came late to the battle, and would not be able to stop the war. Sori tells them that he can feel the malevolence of the battlefield. Alicia decides to speak to the general and convince him to stop the war. Sore promises to do what he can and rides to the battlefield to end the malevolence. He gets to the scene of the battle, and is surprised at the amount of malevolence that can be found on the battlefield. The soldiers fight each other, and the hatred, grief, and fear give rise to Hellionized humans. Sore is undeterred, and tells the Seraphim to help him in battle. They fuse with him, and he heads to the battle. Alicia takes a secret path, but is attacked by Roland's soldiers who fire arrows at her company. Ian falls but gets up immediately, and returns fire. 
taking down every one of the archers. Then they see more of the soldiers. Maltran tells Alicia to go on ahead while she and the rest of the soldiers hold the enemies back. Alicia asks Rose to come with her, and Rose agrees. They ride through the forest to the encampment of the Highland forces. She demands to see the general. The general does not believe she is on the battlefield until she calls his name and orders him to stop the war and sign a truce. Then the general tells his men to capture the princess. The general tells the princess that he has orders from the chancellor to capture her and tells the men to capture her by all means. Meanwhile, Sori goes through the battleground, purifying the humans and clearing the malevolence in the air. Alicia disarms the general and Rose asks the soldiers to listen to them but the general tells Rose to stay away from the matters of Highland. The soldiers attack the girls, and they put up a good fight, beating the soldiers back. Sore, on the other hand, clears out the malevolent spirits on the field. The Roland's general tells the soldiers to launch fire attacks on the battlefield, attacking their men. Sore gets angry and destroys the catapults of both armies and then the malevolent creatures. The general tells his men to press on with the attack on the two girls, and Rose tells the princess that she will not be able to refrain from killing the men. She tries to convince Alicia, but Alicia does not hear of it, and the general tells the men to take them down. Alicia is pushed back by the soldiers and she slips, almost losing her life, but regaining her feet. Rose refuses to let the soldiers get the best of her and decides to kill in self-defense. Rose attacks a soldier, knocking him back, and as she tries to kill him, Alicia blocks her strike with her sword. Alicia explains that she should not kill, and a soldier stabs Alicia in the back. Sori fights the Hellionized humans and the malevolent creatures swirling around the battlefield, then uses a spell to launch several arrows on the battlefield, knocking every one of the soldiers down. Sori collapses after the attack, and McLeo rushes to help him. Suddenly, they feel another malevolence from somewhere else. Sori rushes there and sees another battle between both armies. The soldier fears after stabbing the princess, and the general commends him for it. Rose scolds him for it, but Alicia tells the soldier not to worry about her and advises him to clean his sword. Rose scolds the soldiers for attacking their princess, and suddenly a breeze blows all the soldiers away. Alicia realizes that it is the work of the Seraphim. There was a Seraphim who had been protecting Rose. Sore and the Seraphim watch as the battle gives rise to a powerful Hellionized human. Sore looks with fear and wonders if it is the Lord of Calamity. Landon scolds the soldiers for not being able to get the princess and tells them to get Rose. Rose places Alicia safely and then attacks the soldier before jumping behind Landon and threatening to kill him unless the soldiers stop the war. The soldiers send out the message to stop the war, and the riders ride through the battlefield with the message of truce. They release the flag of truce, and the soldiers stop fighting. The servant of the Lord of Calamity speaks about the war with their lord, and hopes that the fighting continues. Sori and the Seraphim wonder about the domain of the Hellion, and Say becomes afraid as he looks at the Lord of Calamity. He is surprised at the strength of a full human Hellion. Sorey runs forward and Mikleo follows him. Lila and Edna decide to go with them because they cannot let Sorey die on the battlefield. Sorey stands before the Lord of Calamity, and his courage increases when he sees the true form of the Lord of Calamity. The servant insults Sorey for speaking to her Lord, and the Lord teases Sorey, provoking him to battle. Sorey strikes at the Lord, but the Lord catches the sword with one arm, and Sorey can see his human form. Then the Lord throws him back. The Lord teases Sorey for coming to face him, and speaks to him about the premonition of death. The Seraphim merges with Sorey, and he attacks the Lord of Calamity again, but the Lord of Calamity shields himself from Sarai's attack. The Lord launches his attack that sends Sarai back, and the Seraphim separate from him. The Lord of Calamity causes the malevolence to increase and brings up more malevolent creatures. Sori becomes angry and wants to go against him again, but Layla advises against it, as they are not strong enough to go against the Lord of Calamity. The Lord calls all of the malevolent creatures to gather with him and sets them against Sorei. He teases Sorei wondering if Sori can withstand the pressure from the human malevolence. Sori pushes through the malevolence and the Lord teases him about his weakness. Sori tells the Lord that he will purify the wound, and the Lord of Calamity reminds him that human malevolence is limitless. Each of the Seraphim battles against the malevolent creatures, doing what they can, and Sori screams then jumps into the sky and purifies the malevolent creatures in the sky. Rose gets Alicia to Maltron and the others. They worry about her and Schiller goes to look for a way to help the princess. Alicia wakes up and asks about the fighting, and Maltran assures her that it has stopped. Rose walks away from the princess, wishing she would become better, and promises to go and bring Soray to the princess. Rose runs through the battlefield and gets on a horse to find Soray. The Hellion who attacked Elysia goes through the battlefield, wondering what to do once the princess dies. He is unhappy that the malevolence is too thick even for him, 
He watches as the Rolands general checks the battlefield. The general tells his men to get medics to treat the wounded. Sori continues to purify the Hellions, and Simone, servant of the Lord of Calamity, teases him for his intention to fight the Lord of Calamity. The Lord of Calamity, no longer entertained with Sori's struggles, tells Simone that they are leaving, and then tells Sori that he will crush him after he has become humanity's beacon of hope. The Lord of Calamity and his servant Simone then disappear. Sori falls back from exhaustion, and Miklio catches him. He helps Sori disperse the malevolent creatures, and Edna joins them using her earth-manipulating ability. Lila also uses her fire to disperse some of the creatures. Rose turns through the battlefield, and she hears a voice in her head, asking her where she is going. The Seraphim that has been with her for some time, and has helped her a couple of times, guides her towards where she would find Sori. The Seraph complains about the growing malevolence, and Rose agrees with him. Sore and the Seraphim disperse the last of the creatures, just as Rose rides towards them. Sore turns to see Rose and does not see one of the creatures coming for him. The Seraph with Rose helps him and uses his chain ability to imprison the creature, allowing Sore to purify it. The Seraph tells him not to fear as his work is much more. Then Rose tells Sore about Alicia. That night, Sori checks on Alicia and waits for her. Sori thinks back to some things Alicia had told him as he waits for her to wake up. Sori smiles when he sees that Alicia has become conscious, and she returns the smile. She thanks him for helping her, and he thanks her too for being there and helping him continue to believe in his dreams. She tells him that she plans to return to Lady Lake and get more active with the politics of ruling to prevent the war from breaking out in the first place. Sarai asks Alicia to become his squire, and she agrees. Sarai tells Lila to do it, and Lila recites the spell that would make Alicia his squire. She also tells him to give Alicia a true name. Sori gives Alicia the true name Melphis Amekia, which means the smiling Alicia. Alicia can now see the seraphim, and she sheds tears of joy. The next day, Rose joins Sori and Alicia after giving orders to her men. She teases them, and they all laugh. The Seraphim comments on how close the three of them are getting when suddenly a Hellionized Landon attacks Soray. He blames Soray for making his plans fail. Layla tells the princess that this is what a Hellionized human looks like, and Rose screams that Landon had hurt the princess, enraging Soray. Landon also threatens the princess, causing Soray to become more angry. Layla warns Sore not to let anger control him. Sore brings out his sword in anger and points it at Landon. Layla stands before him, but Sore pushes her out of the way and then walks toward Landon. Edna worries that Sore would get taken over by malevolence. Landon attacks, but Sore jumps forward and strikes him, purifying him. The Seraphim are glad that Sore did not kill him, and Alicia promises to take him back to Lady Lake and deliver him to the judges. Mikleo commends Sore for his control, and the princess's team leaves for the capital. Rose calls Sore and remins him of his debt. Mikleo and Edna assure him that she is up to no good, and Rose tells tells him to follow her to Rolance. She explains that he has a bit of trouble, but the presence of the shepherd would clear such troubles. Sore asks the Seraphim, and they agree to go with her when Sore agrees to go with her. Then Rose asks Sore if the Seraphim that has been following her is still around, and Sore assures her that he is resting on top of her cart. The Seraph teases Rose, who cannot see him, and the other Seraphim laugh at Rose's discomfort. Sori steps forward and says that they should go on. As Sori's team travels with Rose to Rolands, Layla recalls Michael, the shepherd before Sore, who had promised to eliminate all the malevolence in the world. She is glad to be in Sore's company, which has reignited the hope in her heart. She longs to know how Sore would treat life and the answers he would come up with. Layla prays that Michael watches over Sore and guides his shepherd journey. Rose and her supplier haggle over the goods she wants from him, and the supplier tries to get her to purchase the goods. Sore and the Seraphim watch from afar as Rose and the supplier discuss the goods. Sore comments on Rose working hard, and he adds that the suppliers are kind of suspicious. Edna, who isn't even watching the whole exchange, mocks Sori for not noticing the men earlier. Rose checks on the goods the men want to sell to her and tells her second-in-command, Eguile, to pay the men. The men complain about the low pay, and she reminds them that they have tried to sell stolen goods to her. She tries to get them to take the pay and leave, but they call up more of their men to rob her of the goods and her money. Sore screams that the man should take her deal, but Rose is already dealing with the man. She beats them all, but the leader refuses to give up, and she beats him again. One of the robbers tries to run, but Dizel, the seraph who has always been with Rose, uses his wind ability to knock the man down. Then, she has them all tied up and scolds them for their behavior. That night, the crew of Sparrowfeather has a fun moment. And then Rose asks about the whereabouts of Sore. Egule replies that Sore is by the river playing with fire. Meanwhile, Lila trains Sore to purify the fire she conjures up. 
Sore tries to purify the fire, then Miklio joins and adds water to it. But Sore recalls the Lord of Calamity and panics, making him unable to purify the fire and the water. Edna mocks him while Lila and Miklio watch him without saying anything. Rose applauds him, although she doesn't know what he has done. Sore explains to Rose what he has been doing while he hangs his clothes to dry. Rose suggests that he become a street performer and make people happy while they all make money from it. Miklio notices that Sore is considering Rose's offer and warns him. Then Rose reminds him that Alicia would not be happy with that. The next day, Rose's party reaches a border town with a huge market, and Sore is amazed by the activity of the city. Rose attends to her business, while Sore enjoys the sight of the city from a window and comments on the state of the city. The Seraphim also watches watches as the city bustles, and Macleo says that the city is the reason Bartlow wants to go to war against the kingdom. Rose takes Sori to Sparrowfeather's base, and everyone there welcomes Rose. She asks about a man named Glenn, and is sad to learn that he is not around. An old man named Maven appears and greets Rose, but Rose responds with a series of attacks that the man blocks. The man shows Rose two sculptures he had unearthed from ruin, and as Rose and the man discuss it, Sore and the unseen Mikleo also talk about the sculptures. Rose introduces Maven to Sore. Maven is a storyteller and explorer, carrying the history of the world to the next generation. Just then, several merchants bring their wares to Rose and start telling her about their produce. Rose gets overwhelmed and screams at all of them. Layla comments on Rose's likable nature, and Edna agrees. Meanwhile, Maven tells Sore about some of Rose's deeds. Rose asks the farmers if they have seen Glenn, and they reply that they haven't. Rose explains why she has been searching for Glenn to Sore. She wants Glenn, who is interested in the story of the shepherds, to meet Sore and, at the same time, get him to give her a good deal for business. Sergei, the commander of Roland's Platinum Knights, enters the warehouse looking for Sore, and when Sore identifies himself, Sergei announces that Sore will be taken into custody. Sergei explains that he has witnessed the power of the Shepherd in the last war with Highland, and that the country fears the Shepherd has ulterior motives in coming to their kingdom. Sore tries to defend himself, but Sergei does not hear any reasoning. Then Rose confronts Sergei and defends Sore's actions during the last war. Sergei would not listen to her reasoning either, and Rose asks him if he intends to fight the Shepherd. Maven breaks up the tense mood by suggesting a drink and asks Rose to offer a drink to everybody, making everyone run, including Rose. Rose tries to prevent the farmers from grabbing all her drinks while Sore and Sergei engage in a staring contest. That night, after everyone has had their fill of drink, Maven discusses the sculpture he had unearthed and shares the story of the sculpture with Sore. The story is that the Gulaga twin statue is made to face each other across an area, which would cause the fighting in that area to cease. Sore observes the statue and shares his observation with Maven. Then he asks Maven about purifying a dragon. They talk about the dragon that Sore had encountered and their fears about the state of the world. The Seraphim listens in from another room. Maven shares something he heard from another shepherd a long time ago. The shepherd Michael had told him that there is malevolence inside of everyone and asks if he embraces malevolence the moment he accepts the existence of necessary evil. Lila also recalls the story as Michael had asked her the same question too. Sore is sad that he doesn't know the answer, and suddenly, Sergei joins them at their table and drinks, also adding that no one can answer the story. Sergei explains his point, and Maven praises him for his insight. Sergei tries to caution Sergei about his heavy drinking, but lets him be. Then he takes his leave to go for his training with the Seraphim. Sergei follows him, and Maven offers Sergei another drink. Sergei notices Rose heading somewhere alone, and wants to go after her, but Dizelle comes between them and convinces him not to follow Rose, promising to protect Rose. Rose, the leader of the Scattered Bones, meets with her members and gives them orders to carry out. They infiltrate the home of a bishop they want to assassinate. They take down the guards and confront the bishop. They question the bishop about several of his activities, and the bishop answers them. They accuse him of a crime, and he defends his accusations. Rose appears at the window, causing the light to go out, and the bishop panics. Rose rushes him and kills him, ending the interrogation. Sore kept a vigil and saw Rose return from her secret life as an assassin. When morning comes, Sori wakes to see Rose already busy with her daily chores of organizing and leading the Sparrow Feathers. Later, they have breakfast, and Rose asks if the Seraphim are around them, to which Sore points them out. He asks her if she wants them to come over for breakfast, but she declines, and Sore asks about Glenn. Rose encourages Sore to eat, and Sore comments on the food, which makes Rose happy. Edna comments on Rose's elusive behavior towards the Seraphim, and Macleo defends her, saying that Rose cannot see them, so she is afraid of them. Lila reminds them of Rose's reaction to the presence of Dizelle, and Edna agrees. Suddenly, Sergei appears with a bunch of flowers, and Rose goes to meet him. He apologizes for his behavior, and Rose teases him. He also gives her another gift, a box of candy, which she readily accepts, 
and she also invites him to join her and Sore for breakfast. Sergei speaks with Sore about his mission, and Sore explains that Rolance has clues to what he is searching for. Sergei is shocked by the existence of things he cannot see, and when Sore asks why he is alone, he tells Sore about an incident his men are investigating. As Sergei shares the news about the incident, Rose appears unconcerned, while Sore becomes very interested in the matter. Sore asks Sergei if he has to leave, and Sergei replies that he is keeping. A soldier of the Platinum Knight arrives to give Sergei a report of an explosion that occurred in the city. The Seraphim becomes interested in the news and communicates with Sorey, who in turn tells Sergei that the explosion could have been caused by malevolence. Sergei asks Sorey to come with him to check out the explosion, and the soldier who gave the report takes Sergei to a corner to provide additional information regarding the incident they were investigating. Another group of knights had engaged the assassins in battle, although the knights did not lose their lives. Sergei worries that the incident, which was the death of a bishop, was an assassination, but there is no way to prove it. Rose watches without any hint of concern as Sergei and his subordinate try to figure out the death of the bishop. Sergei and Sori reach the scene of the explosion, and they check out the hole in the ground. Upon reaching the site, the Seraphim comes out of Sori and confirms that the explosion is a result of malevolence. Sergei joins Sore, and they decide to enter the hole in the ground to confirm the true nature of the explosion. Meanwhile, Rose and Aguile go to Glenn's house to check on him, while Dazel stands guard from a distance. Grudman, the commander of the Blue Storm Knights that answer to the church, checks on the bishop and instructs his men to hide the truth about the bishop's death from the public. As Sori and the others go through the tunnel beneath the city, Layla produces light, which shocks Sergei and clears his doubt about the presence of the Seraphim. Edna and Lila enter into Sore, and the company moves forward. Miklio and Sore discuss the malevolence in the tunnels and other parts of their life. Sergei, who can see and hear only Sore, follows behind and wonders. Meanwhile, Rose and Aguile discuss with Glenn's wife to find his whereabouts. The wife welcomes Rose warmly and shares some information about her husband. Glenn had gone to make a delivery to the church and has been absent since then. Glenn's wife weeps and takes her leave, while Rose boils in anger, thinking that the church must have killed Glenn. Sari and company continue to head further into the tunnel, and Mikleo comments on the malevolence getting stronger. Sori points to some bugs on the walls, and suddenly Sergei feels pressure in the water. Sore and Mikleo decide to purify the water. They begin the purification while Sergei watches from a distance and is shocked at the enormous power of the shepherd. Mikleo and Sore comment on the work done, and then Sore explains to Sergei what he has done. Sergei fears that the city is tainted with malevolence, and Sore adds that there is more malevolence in the tunnel. Sergei marvels at the powers of the shepherd and then asks Sore about the Seraphim. Sore's company decides to move forward to check out a building close to the tunnel, then converses with Mikleo on how the church hides the evil they do, allowing malevolence to pile up. Just then, Sergei feels something in the water and Sore tells him to ignore it. They keep walking and get to a barred gate. The guards protecting the gate tell them to back off, and Sergei identifies them as the Blue Storm Knight and confronts them. The Blue Storm Knight refuses to let them pass even after realizing that it is Sergei, and Sergei does not pursue the matter. Instead, he turns to Sore and they walk off while discussing what the church could have hidden there. Rose walks home dejected while Aguile tries to calm her down. He stops her and reminds her of her role as an assassin. He tells her not to let her emotions rule her. Sergei explains his rival knight to Sore and Mikleo, and Sore comments on the similarities between Highland and Rolands. Mikleo worries that no dragon has appeared in Rolands, and Sore adds that the malevolence in Rolands is not less than that of Highland. Then Sore asks Sergei about disasters that have occurred in Rolands and Sergei replies that the capital of Rolands, Pendrago, is suffering from unending rain, which alerts both Sore and Mikleo. They get out of the hole in the ground to be confronted by Grudman, the commander of the Blue Storm Knight. Egi cautions Rose, but Rose refuses to ignore the death of her friend Glenn. Suddenly, Diesel speaks and appears before her, but she cannot see him. He offers his help. Egi, who cannot hear Diesel, speaks to Rose, but she does not answer him. Diesel speaks to her about the path she had taken to destroy those who oppress the innocents, but Rose is happy to be able to communicate with the Seraphim. She asks Diesel his name and introduces herself, but Diesel assures her that he is aware of her name. Then, Diesel disappears to help her destroy her enemies. She runs after him, leaving Aguili, who is surprised by the whole thing, standing alone. Grudman is introduced to Sori, and then Grudman asks Sergei about his mission beneath the cathedral. Sergei refuses to talk, and Grudman threatens to detain him and Sore. Suddenly they hear a loud explosion and see Rose running towards something. Then, they see Dizel running along the walls of the city. Dizel creates a windstorm to destroy the cathedral. Dizel uses the windstorm to destroy a part of the church, while Rose runs towards Dizel. Edna reminds Sore and the Seraphim that they have to hurry after Rose, 
then distracts Grudman and his men with a mini earthquake before Sore and his company goes after Dazel. Grudman gets up to go after Sore, but Sergei blocks his view. Lila reminds Sore that Dazel will be consumed by malevolence if he continues on the track he is on. She promises to handle Dazel, along with the Seraphim. Mikleo tells Sore to handle Rose as they get close to her. Sore meets up with Rose as she struggles to get close to Diesel in the windstorm. Sore assures Rose that the Seraphim will stop Diesel, and she looks towards the windstorm as she cannot see Diesel. Layla and the Seraphim surround Diesel and question his actions. Dizel replies that he does as he likes and threatens them before attacking them. Edna blocks his attack, giving Mikleo an opening to attack him, but he dodges Mikleo's attack. Rose and Sori comment on the attacks which Rose cannot see but feels. Sori then asks Rose the reason for Dizel's actions. Layla angrily uses her fire to burn up the windstorm. This causes an explosion that destroys a part of the walls. Rose and Sore are almost hit by falling debris, but Dizel, seeing Rose in danger, uses his wind ability to destroy the stone. Rose pleads with them to stop, but the Seraphim continues to battle without listening. Layla uses a powerful spell to destroy the area where Diesel is. Diesel shields himself from the attack and then faces Layla again, but Rose screams at him to stop. He gives her a look and then surrenders. Soray and the others meet with him later to know the reason for his actions, and Dizel explains that he is only punishing the church for its wrongdoing. Dizel then shares a story of his past. He had been with a mercenary group called the Wind Riders and liked their leader, Brad. He speaks about his time with the group and watching them help the less privileged. Brad found Rose wandering a field and then took her in. Brad took care of Rose as if she were his own, and after Brad passed away, Rose inherited everything from him. Dizel praises Rose and promises to do everything she desires. Sore asks about the fate of Brad, and Dizel replies that Brad is dead. Meanwhile, Rose sits in her room and thinks about her life. Suddenly, she speaks to Dizel, who is waiting for her. She asks Dizel how long he has been standing there, and Dizel replies that he has always been with her. Then she recalls some moments in her childhood, and it appears as if Dizel was with her. The city rebuilds after the attack on the cathedral while Grudman searches for Sore and the Seraphim. Edna announces that Grudman has discovered them, and Sore goes down to meet him. Grudman asks him for an explanation, and Sore explains to Grudman. Grudman wonders if it was Sore who did it, and Sore explains that he is not a god, but a human. Sore asks about Sergei, and Grudman replies that Sergei has been arrested, which saddens Sore. Sore then asks Grudman about his intentions for him as the shepherd, and accuses him of plotting to start another war. Grudman requested his help, but Sori declined his request. Sori shares his plans to head to the capital and tells him to escort him along with Sergei. Sori then turns to leave, but Grudman wants to follow, and Edna stops him with a wall of earth. Sori and the Seraphim go to the market and discuss the issue of going to the capital. They watch as people come and go with their activities, and Sorey explains what he understands malevolence to be. Sori recalls his dream of making the Seraphim live in harmony with humans, and adds that he wants to get rid of the fighting in the world. Rose speaks to Dazzle about her plans, and Dazzle promises to kill everyone in power, if she wishes. Sori gets back to Rose's farm to see Maven the storyteller waiting for him. They exchange greetings, and Maven reminds Sarai of the question the previous shepherd wanted to answer, on how everyone has malevolence, and if he should embrace malevolence when he admits the existence of a necessary evil. Maven gives his perspective on the answer and takes his leave. Sorey contemplates the words of Maven and the Seraphim chip, in their opinion of Sore's actions. Mikleo promises to follow Sore no matter what his answer is, then teases Edna for being shy about wanting to follow Sore. Layla then reminds Sore of Alicia and asks him to listen in his heart for Alicia's voice. Sore then tries but fails to hear Alicia. He attributes this to him not yet reaching a higher level in his shepherd's training. Meanwhile, Alicia and her men are running from the soldiers influenced by Bartlow. The Chancellor had turned the heart of the city against Alicia, accusing her of many crimes. The soldiers of Highland ambush Alicia's men and attack them, but Alicia tells her men not to kill the soldiers of their kingdom. Alicia's men find themselves in a pickle, and Schiller saves Alicia from a soldier that sneaked up on her. Later, a soldier reports to Bartlow at his mansion on the progress of their search for the princess. Alicia and her men manage to escape the soldiers and go to a secret place that Alicia knows from her childhood. Alicia tells Schiller the story about the place before Ian joins them. Ian gives her a report of what has happened to the rest of Alicia's men and the arrest of Maltrin. Ian also tells them about the situation of things in the capital and Barlow's plan for the princess. Alicia becomes downcast, reflects on her actions, and regrets her failure at failing to achieve her ideals. She asks herself what Sore 
Sori would have done and pictures Sori's response. She becomes animated and convinces herself not to become downcast. Then she encourages her men with a conviction that drives them to continue to support her. She thanks them for their support before giving them their next plan of action. Sori wonders how Rose is when she broods in her room. Eguile checks in on her to report that her arch enemy, Prince Conan, has been found. Sori walks in on her telling Aguile what to do. Rose recalls an incident in her past when she prepared to get married to Prince Conan as part of an agreement between her foster father, Brad, and Prince Conan. She teases the members of the Windriders with her wedding outfit, and they tease her back. Brad joins his crew in their merrymaking when suddenly they are attacked by Prince Conan's men. Her friends all died around her, and Brad also died to save her. Sori checks in with Rose in the morning while he is looking for Dazzle, and Rose replies to him without her usual charm. Sori lets her know that he intends to find out the reason for Dazzle's actions, and Rose replies that the church got what they deserved. Sarai then tells her that he is heading to the capital, and asks her to go with him, but he intends to use her to get Dazzle to come with him. Rose declined his offer, as she had seen through his intentions. Sori goes back to his room to see Macleo, and they discuss Rose and Dazzle's relationship, and everything they know about Rose. Macleo reminds him of how people trust Rose and adds that Dizelle might know something about Rose that they don't. Mikleo watches as Rose's party sets out for their mission and decides to follow Rose while Sori heads to the capital with Grudman. They wish each other luck and set out. Mikleo sneaks into a cart to find Edna already waiting for him. She teases him for not being able to handle Dizelle on his own. Dizelle notes that the Seraphim are part of the cavan but does not say anything. Edna and Mikleo talk about Rose's plans when Dizelle suddenly appears behind them. Dizelle asks after Sori, and they tell him where Sori has gone. Mikleo adds that they have come to check on Dazzle after his rampage at the church. Dizelle is unmoved that they have come to keep an eye on him. Meanwhile, Sori and Grudman discuss the situation between Highland and Rollins, and the inevitability of war. Sori drills him about his convictions and asks why he had Sergei arrested. Grudman explains that their bosses are not on good terms, and Sergei insists on protecting Sori. But Grodman had a soft heart, and had decided to take Sergei with them to the capital. Rose's party meets up with a scout who reports on the current development with Prince Conan. Mikleo tries to listen, but is too far away and Edna suggests that they go forward to learn more about Rose's mission. They get there to hear the man confirm Conan's identity and location to Rose. Then Rose promises to kill Conan. Mikleo and Edna go back to Dizelle to find out Rose's plans, and Dizelle replies that Rose is doing her duty as the leader of the Scattered Bones assassin organization. Dizelle narrates Rose's story to the Seraphim of how she had learned to kill from a very early age. She does not commit murder but carries out a mission based on Brad's will. Dizelle adds that he is impressed with her raising the sparrow feathers to a greater height. Rose and Egwil talk about the morals of their assassination while Dizelle shares the truth of the mission with Macleo and Edna. He then told them about Brad, and how Brad had been a good person helping the weak before joining Prince Conan in one war to end all wars. Prince Conan also promised to marry Rose, and then they had won the war but lost a lot of lives. Prince Conan also betrayed the Windriders whom he had made a deal with, leading to the death of many of the mercenary crew. Edna recalls her brother as Dazel speaks and cautions him for his belief. She decides to go after Saray and Dazel continues to explain his belief in Rose's actions. But Edna jumps off the moving cart. Mikleo joins her and decides to go after Sore himself. He runs to a horse tethered at the side of the road and gets on it. He calls Sore and Sore, who is going in the opposite direction, feels Mikleo calling him. Edna watches as Rose and Egwil make plans to assault Conan's base. They make plans on how to get to Conan in the castle, and Rose tells them not to kill anyone but Conan. Egwil reminds her that for them to take out Conan, they would have to wait until he is alone and reminds her of the effort they had taken to get to Conan. She senses Dazel's presence, and Dazel assures her that Conan will die. The assassins sneak into the castle looking for Conan, and Rose sees him in a courtyard, observing a training exercise for his men. Later, a priest shows Conan a product they have been working on, which they intend to send to the people. Rose and Agui hide in the rafters as they listen in on their conversation, and Rose comments on how the church is part of Conan's evil plans. Diesel watches as Conan and the priest make some plans and promise that it will be their last night. As Sori's party makes camp, he sits and thinks about Mikleo's voice he had heard. Suddenly, Mikleo appears to tell him about Rose's intentions. Sergei, who is resting, sees Sori take off and goes to his tent to see the message that Sori left behind. Sori rides fast to get to Rose before she commits murder, shocked that Rose is an assassin, as Mikleo had shared with him. Meanwhile, the scattered bones knock out the sentries and guards in the castle, allowing Rose to head towards Conan's room. Sarai meets up with Edna, who was waiting behind. Rose gets into Conan's room and walks towards him, 
recalling seeing the corpse of Brad, while she stands above Conan to strike him on his bed. Saray fuses with the Seraphim and uses Edna's ability to jump into Conan's room after destroying the wall. Saray is shocked to see Rose with her bloody blade and comments on how it must be tough to be the Shepherd. Prince Conan, however, did not die and got back up, shocking Rose because she had done a good job with her kill. Suddenly, the whole room was filled with Conan's men. Rose reminds Conan of his actions in the past, which led to Brad's death and his promise to marry her. He laughs at her naivety and mocks the Wind Riders. Rose gets angry and rushes forward to attack Conan, but Soray jumps in her path. Then Dizel attacks, knocking Soray away and allowing Rose to attack Conan's men. As Dizel keeps Soray occupied and Rose fights the men, Edna knocks Dizel out of the room. Mikleo catches Soray, who was knocked out by Dizel's power, and then Soray begs Rose not to kill anyone. Rose continues with the attack, and Conan runs outside to the balcony. He runs to the edge of the balcony to get as far from Rose as possible, but Rose catches up to him and strikes again. Soray had followed them onto the balcony to stop Rose but was unable to catch her before she struck. When Rose struck Conan, he turned and held her blades. He had turned into a Hellion and attacked Rose, beating her back and knocking her down. Rose went after him again, but Sori told her to get away from Conan. She refused and suddenly Conan destroyed the floor with unnatural power and grabbed Rose by the neck to kill her. Rose stabbed him, intending to take him down. Dizel attacked Conan, but Conan turned in time to keep Dizel at bay. The clash of powers caused another explosion, and Conan fell into the water, but Sore grabbed Rose as she fell. The Scattered Bones crew waited at the riverbank as Sore dragged Rose out of the water and tried to revive her. Rose got up to ask about Conan, and Sore replied that Conan was dead. She did not believe it, and wanted to go and confirm it herself. She walked back to the lake, refusing even to listen to Lila as she tried to explain, but Dezel stopped Rose. The Sparrow Feathers ride back to Rose's base while Rose broods over her actions. She scolded Sore for butting in on her well-planned revenge. Sore tried to get her to change her mind about killing, and Rose defended her cause as an assassin. The caravan moved slowly, and everyone was sober as Rose and Sore talked about their differences in belief. As the crew headed towards Pendrago, they experienced continuous rainfall, and Sori covered Rose with a cloth. He told her about his life in Elysia, and his war with Malevolence. He reminded her of the existence of Dizel and the other Seraphim. Soray continued to tell her about his missions around Highland, and she replied that she had become Malevolent. The caravan stopped when they got to a roadblock, and Soray and Rose continued their conversation beneath a tree while the Seraphim hung around. Soray commended Rose for the courage to face her malevolence every day of her life. When the caravan got moving again, Rose took a nap inside the cart while the Seraphim talked about the land. Layla asked Dizel what he intended to do with Rose now that she was vulnerable to him. He answered, and she asked if he had possessed her since she was little. Dizel told the Seraphim that he was done with revenge and only aimed to make the world a better place, just like Brad wanted. Egile noticed some men waiting ahead on the road for them, but kept going, while Sore checked on Rose, guarding her body while she slept. Dizel told the Seraphim that he would realize Brad's goals with Rose as his puppet. The soldiers who stopped the caravan ask after the shepherd and Sori meets with them. They tell him of their orders from Sergei. The soldier tells the caravan that the Blue Storm Knights have a checkpoint ahead looking for them, but Sergei wants them to take another route and meet him somewhere. Then he asks Sore to follow them. Rose appears behind him and asks them all to wait as she does not trust them. The soldier shares his belief which is similar to Sergei's belief about the avoidance of war. Rose is removed, but Soray assures her that he will be fine before Rose agrees. The soldier then shares how the journey would go, then brings horses for Rose and Sori, as Rose decides to go with them. As they ride through the forest, Sori pauses because of the malevolence in the forest, and Layla suggests that they purify the forest. Sori said that they had to push forward, and they did. Rose, who can't see anything, asks Dizel about it, and he tells her about the malevolence in the forest. Rose is startled by the malevolence, but she retains her reins and she thinks about the malevolence which she cannot see but feel. She asks Sori about it, and then shares her dream of helping the poor and defending the weak with Sore, asking him if she had been wrong and chasing the wrong dream. Sore explains that killing is not good no matter how it is defended, and adds that he like is Rosie. Sore tells the guys to hurry, as the malevolence is getting worse. Rose wonders if she is powerless to believe in herself, and Sore explains that she has a different kind of power. Suddenly a malevolent creature appears above Rose, but Sore dispatches it, purifying it quickly. Rose gets angry that she has been fighting the wrong battles all her life, 
and she screams out loud crying. She recalled her childhood after a war when she had been one of the survivors. A scavenger saw her and was dragging her away, but Brad stepped forward and stopped the man. The man's friends gather around Brad to beat him up, but then they notice that Brad is not alone, but with his men. The scavengers recognize the mercenary group, and they all run away. Then Brad gives Rose a knife before asking her if she would join him. She recalled all the joyful moments with him and the way he had taught her to fight and survive in the wild. Rose once told Brad that she wanted to become like him and make everyone happy. Brad had taught her a valuable lesson about helping the weak, and she had lived by it all her life. As they ride towards the edge of the forest, Saray purifies the malevolence in the forest, and they ride out of the trees. But Rose still remembers Brad and cries for his death. Sori and Rose reached the palace of the Emperor of Rolands to see Sergei waiting for them. Sori and Sergei exchanged pleasantries, and Sergei told Sore that he was at the palace of the Emperor, and that Grudman and his knights had no jurisdiction in the palace. Just then, the Emperor stepped out himself and welcomed Sore, Rose, and Aguile, who took note of what was happening but said nothing. Doran, the Emperor was introduced to Sorey, and Sergei reminded the Emperor that he was not supposed to be out in the rain. Doran assured Sergei that he was fine before leading Sorey inside the palace. Rose and Aguil talked about the Emperor who happened to be the father of Prince Conan, whom she had killed. He questioned her intentions and she replied that she did not care about whatever happened. Aguil scolded her for her answer but did not pursue the matter, then changed the topic of conversation. Sorey and the Emperor talked about Rolance and how Sore perceived Rolance from the shepherd's point of view. Sore replied that it was not good, and Doran asked if it was because of malevolence. Sore was shocked that the king was aware of malevolence, and asked if Doran could see malevolence. Doran explained that his family, the imperial family, had struggled to cement their dynasty in the kingdom and had kept a secret passing it down the family line. Sori was shocked and wanted to know how the family had done that. Then Doran replied that the storyteller Maven had been responsible for sharing the story. The Emperor explained that Maven was more of a title than a name, and that Maven had broken an oath to reveal a secret to the ancestors of the royal family. Sori wondered if the secret had to do with malevolence, and the Emperor agreed saying that the secret was several thousand years old. He told Sori the story of Artorius who had tried to rid the world of malevolence and had used Velvet Crow's brother to make a sacrifice that killed off all human emotions and eliminated malevolence from the entire world. Velvet Crow's hatred for Artorius had been the beginning of the calamity that had befallen the world, according to the storyteller. Rose sat in her room thinking, and then she asked Dezel to help her see malevolence, as she wanted to make the world better for the weak. Dezel told her what to do to be able to see malevolence as she desires. Grudman came to the palace and requested an audience with the Emperor. Doran told Sore that he wanted to put an end to the fighting, but was unsure that it would happen. He reported the civil war going on in Highland, and that Alicia had been arrested for treason. Sergei came in to announce the presence of Grudman, while Miklio whispered to Sore about Alicia. Sore shrugged his shoulders and told the Emperor that they had to go to Pendrago, then told Miklio that although he was worried about Alicia, he would have to help Rolance before leaving. The Emperor replied that he would escort Sore to Pendrago and then told him about a church in Pendrago that was locked down. Duran the Emperor promised to help them grease their passage to the church, and told Sergei to get the Blue Storm Knights to come witness the actions of the Shepherd. They all stepped out of the room, as Rose stepped out too. She asked to see Sore, and they sat together in a carriage. Rose wanted to negotiate a deal with Sore. She told him that they could both benefit from the deal. Rose then told him about her past life as an assassin, and how she had intended to make the world a better place with her actions. But then she had seen that the world is different from what she had expected. She told Sore that she would like to become his squire, reminding him that he is only one person. And then she asked for the benefits and problems of becoming his squire. Layla comes out of Sore and answers him telling him she would join the Shepherd in saving the world, but she risks her life if the Shepherd loses his life. Sori is shocked that such a cost exists and worries about Alicia, but Layla assures him that Alicia knew the cost of being the Shepherd's squire before she chose to do so. Layla continues that the squire would have to take on some of the malevolence that the Shepherd takes on by being his squire. Rose asks if there were more, and Layla tells her that there were none. Rose happily tells them to take her life, and Layla adds that the burden on him would increase with more squires. They ride into the city of Pendrago, and Sori asks Rose if she can feel the malevolence, but Rose can't sense the malevolence. Sori tells Rose of the pain he feels and tries to dissuade her from wanting to become his squire, but she refuses to be deterred, and tells Sore that she would rather face the three, he'd on than stay safe out of it. They stop before the cathedral in Pendrago, and Sori becomes weak from the malevolence. Dizel feels the malevolence and asks Rose about it, but she can only sense something is wrong, but she does not understand what it is. Layla goes to Sore to try and convince him to take on Rose as his squire, 
and Sore replies that he would not invite her, but if she insists, then he would take her. Doran comes to meet them and they talk about the church. At the same time, the Pope of the church comes out of his carriage to greet the king. Doran speaks formally to the Pope and tells him that Sore has come to help the land. The Pope greets Sore and Sore asks to be let into the church. The Pope tries to get them to go elsewhere, but the Emperor orders him to do as instructed. The Pope retreats in fear, and Diesel blows open the door out of anger. Sore, Rose, and the Seraphim run into the church. Grudman wanted to go after them, but Sergei stopped him. Sore leads them to where the malevolence is strongest, and they see a dead dragon. They comment on the power of the dragon, and Sore is sad that the dragon's pain would not leave. Sore says he would purify the dragon himself, and Lila tries to convince him to let Rose help him, but he declines her offer. He insists on going after it himself, and Rose asks him to let her become his squire as she wants to see what he is seeing. She listed her role as a squire, and told him that he would give her a true name. Sore realizes that Dizel must have told her about it, and asks Rose if she is okay without thinking too much about it. Layla performs the ritual, and asks Sore to give Rose a true name. When the ritual is done, Rose opens her eyes to see the malevolence emitting from the dragon and panics. Sore asks her to help him as he tries to purify the dragon and she agrees to do so. Sori begins the ritual of purification, and the malevolence starts to overwhelm Sori, then he asks Rose to help him. Rose grabs Sori's sword, taking on some of the malevolence and the malevolence is sent back. Some malevolence wants to escape, but Miklio and the other Seraphim disperse it. Sore is encouraged by the help of the Seraphim and with the help of Rose, purifies the dragon. The action clears the dark cloud hanging over Pendrago and Grudman marvels at the powers of the Shepherd. Rose collapses after the purification is done, and Sore, along with the Seraphim, worries that she is dead, but Rose wakes up and scolds the Seraphim for assuming that she is dead. Rose sees Dezel for the first time and teases him about his look. She then commands Sore for his work as a shepherd. Just then, Sore hears Alicia's voice in his head, and she tells him about her recent exploits and requests that he come to her aid. She tells him that another tornado had appeared in Highland, but then Alicia's voice filters out, and Rose tells him that they should go help the princess. He looks at the Seraphim and sees them waiting for him, then he tells them that they are going to Lady Lake. Alicia is sad that she lost connection with Sori, and then she looks at the growing tornado approaching Lady Lake. She and her men ride towards the houses along the path of the tornado, and get the people there to safety. The princess worries that a stronger tornado will be heading toward Lady Lake. Schiller warns her that Bartlow would anticipate her moves and lay an ambush for her. Alicia decides to go ahead despite that, and Ian praises her for her decision. Bartlow meets with the King of Highland, Alicia's father, and reports on the progress of finding Alicia. Bartlow lies about what he is doing, but the king says nothing, only telling him to bring back his daughter alive as he wants to see her before he dies. The king shares the story of Alicia's birth, and has a coughing fit before Bartlow summons the doctor to check on the king. Bartlow then goes to the dungeon to make a joke about Maltran, and tries to convince her to betray the princess, by confirming the lies he had spread about Princess Alicia. He teases her, but Maltran does not take his bait. Maltran assures him that Alicia and her men are brave and would never bow to him. Bartlow lets her know that the king now believes Alicia is guilty and has left the princess's punishment in his hands. But as Bartlow leaves her, Maltran worries about the welfare of Alicia. Meanwhile, Alicia and her men are helping the people of a town. Schiller gives her a report on the level of damage the tornado caused. Just then, the soldiers of the kingdom arrive to attack Alicia's men. Schiller leads the charge against the soldiers of the kingdom, but they stop when Ian starts firing arrows at them and criticizes them. Alicia tells her men not to kill the soldiers, and the officer in charge of her capture insults her before telling his men to attack. As the two armies reach towards each other, a large group of Hellions run into the enemy soldiers, breaking their ranks and overwhelming them. Alicia tells her men to retreat and to help the injured. As Ian helps a wounded man, she is slowed down and the Hellions reach for her. The princess grabs her spear and disperses the Hellions although she cannot purify them. The princess becomes overwhelmed and she starts drifting off. Zaved appears and shoots the Hellions, killing them and saving the princess. The princess identifies him as a seraph, and they talk. She tells Zaved that she is Sori's squire, and Zaved confirms that he knows Sore. He tells Alicia that he had come to Lady Lake because of the rumors of a dragon, and complains that Lady Lake is full of malevolence. Zaved tells her that Sore would not be able to fulfill his promise to purify the dragon, because human actions create more malevolence. Then he adds that he can end the dragon with his pistol. He tells the princess about his divine artifact called Siegfried, and how it can kill dragons. He laughs as he recalls that Sore would want to save the dragon, and then tells Alicia to extend his greetings to Sore. Alicia thinks of the calamities befalling her kingdom and decides that the civil war caused the tornado. If the civil war ends, 
then the tornadoes will cease. She wants Sori to come and deal with the tornadoes while she buys time for him. The next day, Ian reports to the princess that Maltran is being crucified at the city square, and the princess becomes sad. Schiller and Ian speak to her about the crucifixion which is a trap laid by Bartlow, and ask the princess what she intends to do. The princess contemplates her options, and Schiller adds that the princess should let them know how far they would take their decision of not killing their fellow soldiers who have been corrupted by Bartlow's lies. Ian agrees, and they leave the princess to brood. Suddenly the princess notices Lunar, the Hellion who has taken an interest in her. Lunar greets her, but she guards herself from a possible attack and asks Lunar what he wants. Lunar tells her how long he had been following her, and how she had entertained him. Then he tells her of what Bartlow is doing in the city using her name. He teases her for her ideals, and she relaxes. She agrees with him that humans are weak, and he tells her to stay out of the way if she is weak. He continues to question her morals and her conviction in her ideals, but she answers truthfully, making him leave in anger. At night, Alicia and her men trick the kingdom's soldiers while they watch them fumble from afar. The princess encourages her men, and then leads her loyalists to Lady Lake. Rose wakes Sori to show him the tornado that is approaching Lady Lake. The Seraphim fuses with him, and he rides towards Lady Lake while Rose rides in the cart behind him. Alicia and her men swim across the lake towards the city, and get to the wall of the city. Bartlow berates the soldiers for failing to capture Alicia, but still hopes that Alicia will come to save her master. Lunar goes to the square to await Alicia's move in attempting to save her master, and falling for Bartlow's trap. Alicia and her men use a rope to climb the wall into the city, while Sori rides toward the tornado with Rose behind him. Alicia and her group get over the wall and make more plans to save Maltran and save Lady Lake from Bartlow. Alicia orders her men not to die, as they begin their mission. The sentries sighted Alicia and her men, and raised an alarm. Alicia then leads her team through a trapdoor in the wall, into the city proper. But as they run through a corridor, they are attacked by archers, and one of Alicia's loyalists falls. Ian finds a safe place and returns fire, bringing down some of the archers and providing an opening for Alicia and Schiller to take down the rest of them. Someone sneaks up on Schiller, and Ian cries out, but it's too late for Schiller to react. However, Alicia saves her by knocking down the soldier. Bartlow realizes that Alicia is in the city, and orders his men to light up the square where Maltran is crucified. He also has a thousand men waiting to ambush her once she goes to save Maltran. Lunare watches and waits for Alicia as the city square lights up around Maltran. Alicia runs through the city, heading to her destination, while Soray's company runs towards Lady Lake. Alicia and her company take down some more soldiers who are on the lookout for them. Lunara decides to have more fun and goes to tease Maltran. He tells her that Alicia is coming to save her, but Maltran is not enthusiastic about his jeebies and asks him who he is. Lunar introduces himself as Alicia's fan and teases Maltran more as he mocks Princess Alicia, expressing his disappointment in her. Maltran calmly mocks him for his wrong conclusion about Alicia's goals. She tells him that Alicia is not coming to save her, and Lunari becomes angry. Some soldiers surround Maltran to keep a better eye on her and await Alicia, but Lunari knocks them all out of the way. Maltran schools him on the principles Alicia lives by and praises Alicia for following her instructions. Alicia leads her soldiers through the city, heading to her destination, while Bartlow wonders where they are headed. Suddenly, he realizes that Alicia is headed to the palace to see the king, and he asks for his chariot to go after her. However, Alicia had already knocked down the guards at the palace and snuck in. Sori tries to reassure the Seraphim inside him as he races towards the tornado. Mikleo wonders how they intend to stop the tornado, and Sori replies that they would purify the malevolence inside the tornado. He explains his opinions of the malevolence of the Seraphim as they race across the land. He tells them that he can tell the size of the malevolence by looking at the Hellion, and that he can see the tornado and what is hiding inside it. He adds that people think dragons cannot be purified, but he believes that there has not been a shepherd who can carry all of the dragon's malevolence. Mikleo asks Sore if he is ready to take on the malevolence of the dragon, and Sore replies that he will try. Rose and Dazel follow behind Sori as they all head towards the tornado. Mikleo asks Sore what would happen to him if he cannot carry the malevolence of the dragon, and Sori replies that he would most likely die, but he assures them that he is confident enough to face the malevolence because his friends are with him. Lila comes out of Sore so that she can comment on Sore's growth without Sore sharing her thoughts. She recalls Michael, the former shepherd, saying that his dream might come true soon. Alicia and her men proceed through the place and take out the last guard of the king, as that had been her destination from the onset not to save Maltran. She enters the king's room and pays obeisance. Then she speaks to her father about the troubles that have befallen their kingdom. As she speaks, the king remains silent, and when she looks up at him, he beckons her over to him. He then tells her about her mother, but all she sees when she looks at him is the malevolence seeping out of him. Just then, Bartlow enters the room, 
He confronts her and approves of her tactic to come for the king rather than go to save her master, Maltran. Bartlow challenges her to a fight, and she declines, but Bartlow continues to bring up false charges against her, intending to make her look like a bad person and a murderer. Bartlow attacks her, and she dodges his strike, pleading for him to stop. However, she trips, and seeing that as an opportunity, Bartlow strikes at her, but the king shields her with his body, and Bartlow kills the king. Alicia weeps for the king, but Bartlow still wants her to fight him, and she refuses. She walks towards him unarmed, and Bartlow retreats. She passes judgment on Bartlow, but he accuses her of attempting to ruin the country with her ideals. Alicia calls the soldiers hidden in the room out, and they all rush out to the shock of Bartlow her loyalists along with the other soldiers of the kingdom. The soldiers accused him of killing the king and misleading them. Bartlow tries to defend himself but cannot convince the people, so he runs outside onto the balcony. He mocks Alicia and then jumps to his death. Alicia confirms with regret that he has died, and then faces the men. She sees the tornado coming closer and despairs. The tornado has reached the city and destroyed the walls, shocking Lunari with the amount of malevolence in the tornado. Zaved appears at Lady Lake, bemoaning the city's end as he sees the tornado and the dragon hidden within it. The dragon begins to rain fire down on the city, causing the princess to panic even more. Suddenly, she hears Soray's voice in her head, asking for her support as his squire. She heads to where Soray is while the Seraphim battles the malevolent creatures surrounding the tornado. Soray fuses with Mikleo and uses a bow to fire at the dragon. As he readies his bow to fire, the Seraphim all pause and marvel at him, hoping he can purify the dragon. He fires at the dragon, bringing it down and then calls Rose to join him as he begins the purification ritual. Soray starts to take on the malevolence of the dragon, and Rose screams in pain as they become connected. Dizel feels for her as she suffers from the malevolence she is taking on, and Soray encourages her. As she goes down again, Alicia appears and helps her up, scolding her for coming late. Alicia asks Soray to connect her and send her some of the malevolence. She immediately becomes weak and almost falls, but Rose helps her up. They hold each other and stand against the malevolence as Soray purifies the dragon. Soray screams out loud, and a bright light emanates from the dragon as the city of Lady Lake becomes purified of all its malevolence. Rosa and Alicia collapse, but Edna and Diesel catch them before they reach the ground, and Soray praises them for their courage in standing firm against the malevolence. Zavid comments on Soray's purification purification of the dragon, and Sori assures Edna that they can now purify her brother. Edna teases him before becoming serious, and thanks him. Simone, the servant of the Lord of Calamity, appears and mocks them for what they did. She tells them that no one can stop the Lord of Calamity, and reveals her master's plans. The people of Lady Lake gather in front of the palace as they pray and await Princess Alicia's recovery. The Seraphim comments on the love the people have for Alicia, and Mikleo expresses his concerns. Suddenly, Soray appears behind them assuring them that all is well, and that Alicia will regain consciousness. They inquire about his well-being, and he assures them that he is in good health. When asked about Alicia and Rose, they inform him that the ladies have been unconscious for nine days. Sori explains what it was like to purify the dragon, and tells the Seraphim that the ladies need time to adapt to the purification process. He advises letting them be until they wake up and then comments on the people praying in front of the palace. Sori becomes alert immediately, and tells the Seraphim that the ladies are awake. Rose and Alicia wake up from bed, get up, look at each other, and commend each other for their participation in purifying the dragon. Later, Ian shows genuine concern for the princess, and Alicia thanks her and Schiller for their support. Maltron encourages Alicia by giving her a good report about the city, while the Seraphim stands to the side and listens. Mikleo shares his concern over the effect of the purification on the ladies. He recalls the ladies, assuring him that they would continue to help Saray as they are undeterred. Alicia describes the feeling for her, and Rose agrees, assuring Mikleo that she and Alicia are capable of whatever is thrown at them. Edna comments on the absence of Dizel, making Rose wonder where he is. Dizel battles with Simone while she teases him. She tries to trick him with an illusion, but he is unfazed. Suddenly, Sori and the other seraphs appear and caution him, but he refuses, saying that he has to confront Simone. Simone mocks Soray and his team, and tells them about the plans the Lord of Calamity has for the world. Then she shows them a vision of the Lord of Calamity and where he can be found. The vision overwhelms Soray and the Seraphs, and they collapse on the ground. They see millions of malevolence pouring into the Lord of Calamity, and then the malevolence spilling out of him to engulf the world. Simone teases them for not being able to handle the vision, and assures them that the world is coming to an end. Sori questions her intentions, but she refuses to answer and disappears. Sori begins to speak, but the Seraphim already knows his plans. They are to go with him, 
where the Lord of Calamity is. Desel teases Sore, and Layla speaks to him about a book, commending his achievements so far, and telling him about Mikul and the books he wrote to guide the shepherds after him. Then she gives him another celestial record which contains some secrets that Michael uncovered. Sori reads the book and sees many things, including the story of Artorius Colbranda and Velvet Crow. He sees how Artorius attempted to remove all malevolence from the world. Later, Rose tries to get him the best clothes for their adventure. He tries on different clothes, but she does not approve of any of them. Saray is unconcerned with his looks, and she reminds him that he is the shepherd and has to look the part. Alicia calls his attention to Ian and Schiller, who come to ask his permission to join his adventure to face the Lord of Calamity. Saray asks asks them about their duty, and they reply that they follow Alicia. Saray is happy that Alicia is going with him, but reminds her of rebuilding the city. Alicia tells him that she has to protect the world as the shepherd's squire first. Ian teases Sori while Alicia grabs a pair of clothing for him to try on, which turns out to be a great fit for him. Many people hear about the adventure to go face the Lord of Calamity and sign up. The Seraphim comments on the growing crew as many people offer their services to Alicia and the generals of the kingdom. Maltran and Alicia discuss the events, and she reminds Alicia of Bartlow's plans to raise an army using the Sacred Bald Festival. Alicia thanks Maltran and pleads with her to take care of the city until her return. Then she takes her leave. Edna and Zavid discuss the impending fight with the Lord of Calamity and she asks him to follow them. Zavid eventually agrees to go along with them. Sori leads his caravan of volunteers outside the city, with Alicia by his side. The Sparrow Feathers also go along with them, and Guille accompanies them, reminding him that their client is the entire nation of Highland, so they would be well compensated. Mikleo and Edna discuss the trip. He tells her that everyone on the journey seems to take it as if they are on a fun trip and not a very terrible battle. Edna insults Vern, and Mikleo agrees with her. As they ride through the countryside, the children wave them off, and Sori returns the greetings. At night, Sori practices, and they all decide to take a hot soak. Sori reads the second celestial record every night. Sori assures Edna that they could save her brother as they pass through his domain, and she reminds him that it makes no sense to save her brother if the world is coming to an end. She tells them to take care of the Lord of Calamity first, and assures her brother that she will come for him later. She helps the team clear a path by blowing up a tree blocking the road. Attack joins the team along with several other Norman Seraphim. Attack exchanges pleasantries with Mikleo and Lila. Attack also reports that Sergei is coming to join the mission. Sergei offers his men and his service to Alicia and the mission to save the world. Sore watches as the entire group makes merry and eats together as one. Zavade and Dazel have a drinking competition with Edna, eating beside them. Sore and Mikleo comment on the unity in the group and the relationship between Alicia and Rose. The Seraphim, including Sore and his squire, discuss the impending battle and their chances of success. Mikleo reminds them of the power of the Lord of Calamity as they have experienced in the battle between Highland and Rollins. The Seraphim are concerned for the Squires, and Diesel suggests that the Squires try the Armatus. Lila tries to argue against it, but Diesel says that they can. Lila then explains what an Armatus is to the Squires and tells them how dangerous it is. Diesel reminds her that they are going against the Lord of Calamity, and that it would be best to try out everything they can. He then volunteers to armatize with Rose. Layla volunteers to armatize with Alicia, but Dizel disagrees, explaining that her powers are connected to Sore's and that her death would cause Sore to lose his powers. Edna volunteers to armatize with Alicia, and tells Dizel that he has to sign a sublord agreement with Sore, Rose and Dizel Armatis, as well as Alicia and Edna. Once the ritual is complete, the squires collapse in weakness. Layla tells them that during armatization, the Seraph is to help the shepherd, and the squire serves as the platform to support the Seraph. Simone watches them carry out the armatization ritual, and says that they would not be able to reach the Lord of Calamity at their level. The whole group moves onward, heading to where the Lord of Calamity is. Ian teases the princess for her outfit, and Sori commends the Sparrow Feathers for providing the clothes. They continue to talk about the clothes, and Dizel moves to another cart to speak with Simone. He asks her if she betrayed the Lord of Calamity, and she tells him that their efforts would amount to nothing, even if they do get to the Lord of Calamity. He asks her why she is accompanying them to the north. Simone does not answer and speaks to him about his devotion to Rose, accusing him of taking away Rose's free will. Then she tells him to look beyond the mountain to where the Lord of Calamity is. Edna and Alicia practice their visualization, while Rose practices with Dazel. Gile and one other member of Sparrow Feather are forced to listen to Rose talking to herself as they cannot see or hear Dazel. Dazel guides Rose through the visualization training so that she will be able to support and unleash the powers of Dazel in battle. She collapses from exhaustion 
and Dazelle asks her if she wishes to give up, but she refuses to give up. During dinner, Alicia wonders if she is not good enough for Armatus, and Rose says she feels the same way. Alicia comments on Rose being able to move well after the training, and Edna mentions that Dazelle has been with Rose for a very long time. Alicia wonders if they can't synchronize as well as Dazelle and Rose, and adds that she is afraid of Armatus. Rose makes light of the situation, and says that they should eat, making Edna comment on how much humans eat. Schiller brings more food and announces a meal she has prepared. She offers it to Sori, who loves it, and offers it to Mikleo, who also loves it. Mikleo wants more, but Sori tells him to get it himself. Mikleo reminds Sori that he cannot take anything from the regular humans. Everyone partakes in the meal and enjoys it, and Rose asks Alicia if she can cook. Alicia regrets that cooking is not part of her training, and Rose says that they should learn together when they get back to Lady Lake. Later, Sori shares some information he had gotten from the Celestial Record with the Seraphim and his squires. He tells them of the powers that exist in the world and bring order to the world. Sori tells them that the world is connected to power via the Earth Pulse, and they wonder if the power is what drives the Lord of Calamity towards the Earth Pulse. Alicia shares what she had learned of the Earth Pulse and how the imbalance of the world is causing chaos. Edna wonders if the power attracts malevolence, and Zavid replies that he is not sure. Then he tells them about how life in the region was. They continue to debate the choices and actions to fight the Lord of Calamity, and Lila reminds them that their journey the next day will be tough. She encourages them to get some rest. Simon looks to the mountain and calls for her master, the Lord of Calamity. Dezel joins her, and she tells him the plan of the Lord of Calamity, which is to find someone who would kill him. Dezel wonders why the Lord would seek death and not purification, and she replies that the Lord is not soft. Dizel continues to quiz her on her thoughts regarding the Lord of Calamity, and she takes her leave without answering him. Dizel checks on Rose as she sleeps and scolds himself for causing her to become Sore's squire. Sori wakes up to a scream and dispatches the malevolent creature in the hall. Everyone wakes up to see that the hall has been overrun with malevolence. The Seraphim joins Sori, and they all dispatch the malevolent creatures in the hall. They continue their journey toward the location of the Lord of Calamity, and Layla warns everyone to stick together as the path is filled with malevolence. The Seraphim all use their ability to create a shield that protects the caravan from the creatures. Suddenly, their path is filled with a lot of dragons. The team panics at the sight of the dragons, and they express their fears about the toughness of their situation. Rose and Alicia voice out that they cannot afford to lose the fight. Lunare comments on the situation and wonders why he came so far out following the princess. The dragons attack the caravan, and Mikleo fears that they will not be able to purify all the dragons. Sori fuses with Lila and begins to purify the dragons. He then fuses with Mikleo to attack the dragons. Sori begins jumping from dragon to dragon to attack them. He gets into a tough spot, and Rose tells Dizelle that she wants to join the fight. Dizelle tries to talk her out of it, but she insists, and they armatize. Then she helps Sore out of his tough spot. Alicia suggests that she and Edna armatize as well. Alicia tells Ian and Schiller that she will be going ahead. She then armatizes with Edna, and uses Edna's earth manipulation to attack the dragons. Lunar looks at the dragons and wishes to join the fight, helping Sori and his team dispatch the malevolent creatures. Zaved's cart passes by Simone, and he shields himself as Simone runs after him to attack his cart. Alicia tries to help but cannot do much, and is also knocked down by the attack. Rose heads towards them to see Alicia and Edna separated and unconscious on the ground. Rose accuses Simone, and she mocks them for not considering her a threat. She tries to attack Rose but is overwhelmed by her own attempt and collapses. Simone turns to the mountains and pleads with the Lord of Calamity to hear her. The Lord of Calamity answers her, and they talk about her bringing the shepherd to him. The Lord of Calamity speaks to her about her desire, and she surrenders to his will, falling deep into the malevolence at the feet of the mountain. Lunar has a lot of fun dispatching the malevolent creatures. They surround him, but he overwhelms them and dispatches all of them. Then he rushes into a larger mass of malevolent creatures, which he dispatches in no time, but he collapses on the ground exhausted. Dizelle holds Rose and pleads with her not to die, speaking to her about how they cannot go any further. Rose argues with him and tells him that she can and will go further. She tells him that their actions will go a long way in cleaning up the world. The others join them to check on Rose, and they see the Lord of Calamity. Suddenly, Simone appears before them as a dragon. Simone turns away from them and joins the other dragon in the sky, and Sori scolds the Lord of Calamity for it. He accuses the Lord of Calamity of exposing Simone to malevolence and turning her into a dragon. The Lord of Calamity does not answer Sore's accusation, but shares his plans of going to the center of the world with Sore. Sore asks about Rose, 
and the Seraphim assures him that she is only unconscious. Later, the caravan begins moving again to follow the Lord of Calamity, and Sori treats Rose. Dizel joins Zavaid, who asks him about Rose. Dizel replies to Zavaid that Rose is unconscious, but Sore is giving her his blessing. Dizel asks Zavaid to lend him his gun so that he can kill Simone the dragon. Dizel recounts how they were able to purify one dragon, which exhausted Sore, and pleads with Zaved that they have to get rid of the malevolence or risk the world being engulfed in it. Dizel collapses, and Zaved tells him to take care of himself, but Dizel only asks for the gun. Sore takes care of Rose, trying to revive her, while Zaved hands his gun over to Dizel. The caravan stops when Ian sees a body lying in the snow. Alicia identifies Lunari, who has collapsed after his battle with the malevolent creatures and orders them to take the body and bury him. They get to a lonely twin close to the Earth Pulse, where the Lord of Calamity is waiting for Sore. Miklio and Sore comment on the state of the town, and a Norman seraph named Grimoire welcomes them. She speaks to them about their mission to purify the Lord of Calamity, and welcomes them into her home. The rest of the Norman seraphs speak with her, while Sore speaks with the seraphim about the second celestial record written by Michael. He asks if the information in the book is true, and Lila replies, that Michael believes it to be true. She tells him about the Anominate and the Empyreans, who are the highest-ranking Seraphim, and have the center of the world as one of their temples. They wonder if the Lord of Calamity is heading to the Earth Pulse because of the Empyreans. Sore speaks to them about Velvet Crow's hatred, which was caused by Artorius's actions of dealing with the malevolence in the world. He wonders if Artorius made a mistake, and Lila asks him what he thinks about it. Sore replies that he has to travel and learn more about the world before he can speak about his opinion. The Norman Seraphs discuss with the elderly Norman Seraph Grimoire, while Sergei discusses with Grudman and Aiguile the things they cannot see but exist in their world. Alicia brings them tea, and they all have a little fun. Then Alicia goes to check on Rose. Zavide and Dazel discuss the purpose of the Seraphim, and Dazel, who is younger, shares his opinion about the role of the Seraphim in the world. Edna mocks him for his belief, and he replies that he wishes Rose to live. Sore and Miklio talk about Velvet Crow, and they wonder about the fate of Velvet Crow. Zavade and Dizel talk about Rose losing the ability to fight, and she becomes alert. She confronts them and asks Alicia to give her some food. After eating, she speaks to Dizel about armatizing with him, and Dizel becomes happy, which surprises Zavid. That night, while they were sleeping, Sori dreams and encounters Velvet. She asks him about freedom, telling him to follow the path he believes in, and he wakes up to see a red moon. The team later buries Lunar, and then Sore dismisses the party that followed him to the north to fight the Lord of Calamity. He thanks them for their service, and the team bids farewell to Sore and his squires. The Norman Seraphs also bid them farewell, and Sore leads them forward to face the Lord of Calamity. As they ride forward, they see many malevolent creatures flying overhead, and they realize that they have been surrounded by the enemy. Simona lands amongst the dragons, and Dizel steps forward to take her on. Dizel offers to sacrifice himself to take on the dragons, so that Sori would be able to fight the Lord of Calamity. Dizel brings out a gun to kill the dragons, and Sori becomes alarmed. Edna scolds Zavade for giving his gun to Dizel, and Dizel tells them that they will take on the dragons with the gun. Sori stops him and announces that he will purify everyone. Dizel refuses to believe it, and Sori tells him that he shouldn't kill the dragons. Suddenly, the rest of the team agrees to pitch in, and Diesel becomes so defeated that they are all ready to fight the dragons with him, including Rose. Diesel accuses them of falling for Sore's charm, and bemoans the fact that he would not be able to kill the dragons with the gun. Dazzle returns the gun to Zavade, and apologizes for the trouble. Then he tells Sore to take care of Rose before stepping forward to battle. He calls Rose, and they armatize. Then he shares his plans to take down the dragons with Rose. They fly through the dragons, avoiding the attacks, but they are pushed back by the dragons. Rose becomes angry, and they rush forward, dodging and attacking those they can, until they get to the center of the dragons. Dizel speaks from within Rose, thanking her for everything, and then he gives his essence into creating a powerful windstorm that destroys everything in its path and threatens to scatter Soray and his company. But Zavid had made a shield for them. Rose breaks out of the armatization and sees only Dizel's cap. She then sees him talking to her in her mind. He speaks to her, encouraging her, and consoling her of his sacrifice. He gives her a message to give Sore and apologizes for possessing her. He tells her of everything that she has done, thinking she is doing it of her own free will, not realizing that she is only acting out his desires. Rose berates him and accepts his involvement in her life, thanking him for everything he has done for her. Dizel laughs, they say their farewell, and Dizel disappears while Rose returns to the normal world. She weeps for the loss of Dizel, while the rest of the team stands behind her and watches. Rose gets up and joins the rest of the team, 
But Sori begins to apologize to her about the death of Dizel. She walks to him and slaps him for becoming despondent, then gives him the message that Dizel had asked her to give him, asking that they move on with their journey. They enter the cave where the Earth Pulse is located, with Rose following closely behind. They go through the cave and marvel at the immense power in it. Mikleo wonders if the power is connected to the Earth Pulse. Sarai adds that the Lord of Calamity is there in the cave, and suddenly, the walls of the cave start to crumble. Zavade saves the team by creating a shield that protects them from the falling debris. Layla attributes the earthquake, which caused the collapse of the cave, to a tectonic shift influenced by the awakening of an Empyrean. Zavade wonders if the powers had consumed the Lord of Calamity, or if he had consumed the powers. Suddenly, the earthquake stops, and they run forward. The Lord of Calamity argues with the Empyreans who attacked him, calling him Heldalf. Heldolf accuses the Empyrean of falling into malevolence, and the Empyrean defends itself, but Heldolf attacks him. The Empyrean tries to dodge the attack, but is knocked down by Heldolf, who teases the Empyrean for getting imprisoned. Heldolf reminds the Empyrean that he cannot be killed or purified. They continue to battle and argue, and Heldolf lays down his terms, telling the Empyrean that the battle for the fate of humanity will be fought by him and the Shepherd. Just then, Sori and his team arrive at the scene, and Heldolf, the Lord of Calamity, introduces Maotelis, the Empyrean. Sori is shocked that the leader of the Empyreans is shaped like a dragon. Heldalf teases them and challenges Sore to a battle. Sore asks Layla to join him, and he rushes forward and attacks Heldalf, but Heldalf simply holds onto the sword. Then he tries to invade the Lord of Calamity's mind. Sori sees a memory from the past about the Lord of Calamity. He sees Michael, the former shepherd, meet with Heldalf, the King of Rolands, at Camlan, the Algin village. Layla explains things to Sore as they go through Heldalf's memory. Michael shows Heldalf the beauty of the Camlan village, and Michael tells Heldalf of his dreams for the Seraphim and humans to live peacefully together. The people of the village have a peaceful existence, and Michael's sister gives Michael a report of her child. Michael takes Heldalf to see Myotilus, the Empyrean, who is also a foundation of the world. Michael pleads with Heldolf to join him and make the world blessed and free from war. But Heldolf has other plans. Heldolf lures the army of Highland to Camlan on the promise of peace and attacks them there. Heldolf and the commander of the knights toast the success of their plans before he leaves the commander in the tent. Michael meets with Heldolf, pleading with him to stop the war, but Heldolf refuses, and Michael runs to save the people of the village. Layla explains the story to Sori, who wonders if Heldalf had planned it all along. Michael meets with Maotelis, who has become possessed by malevolence. But Maotelis refuses to lose faith and prophecies that the Lady of the Lake will guide the birth of a new shepherd. He also promises to give the Lady of the Lake his power of purification, and prevents her from speaking about the event. Michael then goes to his sister's house, where she tells him about her baby, who is in the burning church. Michael saves the child, but curses Heldalf, sacrificing himself and his sister's child to give Heldalf eternal solitude. Sore cries out from memory and asks Lila if Michael had died in the fire, but she is not sure about Michael's fate. They see how Heldalf suffered and wandered the world alone, allowing the small malevolence in him to grow to such an extent that it seeks to enshroud the entire world. Sori gets back to fighting Heldalf, and Heldalf throws him back. Heldalf describes the feelings in him that led to the madness and malevolence, and Sori screams that he would purify him. The Earth Pulse becomes unstable, and Sore resumes fighting with Heldalf. But Heldalf counters, and they go toe to toe. Sori tries to reason with Heldalf, but Heldalf refuses, and suddenly Rose, who is armatized with Mikleo, fires an arrow at Heldalf as she speaks to him also of people looking out for each other and helping each other. He deflects the arrow but faces another attack from the armatized Alicia. Zave joins the fight, but Heldalf manages to keep all of them at bay. Sori speaks to Heldalf about what he has learned as the shepherd traveling the world and learning things. Sori tries to convince Heldalf that he is a good man, but Heldalf screams in pain as the malevolence in him grows and creates a ball of energy that blows outwards and knocks the shepherd and his armatized squires back. The seraphs infuse from the squires and Sore wonders what is going on. Layla explains that it is a curse on him. Then Sore runs forward to attack Heldalf. But Heldolf is unaffected by the attacks and counters briefly, knocking Sore away. Mikleo checks on Sore and is glad when Sore stands on his own. Sore then requests that all of the Seraphim grant him their powers so that he will have the power to face Heldolf one more time. Sore wants to armatize with all of the Seraphim and they eventually agree. He asks Zavid to join him, and Lila starts the ritual to form a pact between Sore and Zavid. Sore encourages the Seraphim, and they encourage him too. He starts the ritual that would armatize the Seraphim, and they do so that they can purify the Lord of Calamity. 
Sori evolves into a more unique and powerful form, Rose and Alicia marvel at the beauty of the new form. He tries to walk and collapses, and the seraphs inside him encourage him. Then he stands and walks towards Heldalf. Heldalf becomes angry and he evolves too, becoming bigger than he ever was and becoming more of a beast. Sore insults his new form and tells him that he is now more of a beast. Sore keeps attacking and attacking, but the Lord of Calamity counters them all. He beats Heldalf around and promises to purify the malevolence inside him. Rose and Alicia plead with Sore to share some of the malevolence with them and he does. Rose becomes overwhelmed by the malevolence, but feels the presence of Dezel, and she becomes encouraged. She holds hands with Alicia, while Sore uses different attacks to purify Heldalf. Sore gives his all, brings out his greatest weapon, and strikes Heldalf down with it. The Seraphim comes out of Sori and speaks about the success of their mission. They look at the Lord of Calamity and see that more malevolence is creeping in from cracks in the ground and into the Lord of Calamity. The Seraphim cries that Heldalf has more malevolence seeping into him as they try to get him, but the Lord of Calamity says that all he wanted was to disappear without a trace and gets angry that he is unable to get his wishes. Sori and the Seraphim discuss the growing malevolence and the possible birth of a new Lord of Calamity. Sori reminds them of what Heldalf said, and the Seraphim despair that their mission is a failure. They comment on how the world will be affected if malevolence overflows and covers the world. Heldalf becomes angry and knocks them all out. Sore speaks to him about his opinion about humanity and how life is precious. Sore tells the Seraphim and his squires that he would have to seal Heldalf inside the Earth Pulse. Macleo tries to talk him out of his plans, but Sori has made up his mind. His squires want to go with him, but he assures them that he will be okay and that he will go alone. Sori gives an order to Macleo regarding the world, and they shake it. Sori then fuses with the Seraphim so that he can create a hole in the ground so that he and the Lord of Calamity can pass through to the Earth Pulse. He rushes forward to fight with Heldalf and knocks Heldalf into the lava towards the Earth Pulse. The Seraphim comes out of him as he heads towards the Earth Pulse with Heldalf. They cry that Sore is alive, and Maotelis appears before them to congratulate them for their success and encourage them to make the world cleaner. Mikleo becomes animated and tells the team that they would have to do as Sori had tasked them. All evil had disappeared from the land thanks to Sore's sacrifice. Ian runs to the palace to give a report, and Schiller asks Maltran if Alicia is ready to work. Maltran scolds Schiller for being too familiar with Queen Alicia, and Ian teases her about it. Alicia asks Maltran about the new relationship they are building with Rolands, and Maltran tells her of the enthusiasm of the Emperor who wishes to see Lady Lake. The two nations sign their peace treaty, and she tells them to pass on the story of the Shepherd and the Seraphim. Layla oversees the rebuilding of Kamlan and also the guidance of the new Shepherd. Zavid goes back to Rayfok with Edna. He teases her for her eating habits, and she defends herself saying the humans keep bringing offerings of food to them. They talk about the new life, and Edna thinks about her brother. She becomes happy that her brother is adjusting to life as a dragon, because Sore is not around to purify him. The dragon lands in front of Edna and calls her name before flying away. The land becomes free and joyful, and Rose sees that her business is growing very well in the capable hands of Egile. She sees a Norman Seraph eating, and she grabs some ingredients to see Princess Alicia and help her with her cooking lessons. Egwil joins them and scolds them for their playful nature, asking when they hope to get married with such behavior. Ian and Schiller run to meet with Alicia and tell her that Ian has been rejected by a suitor because of her strength. They all play around and laugh about it. Alicia and Rose go to the river and discuss their plans for the future. Alicia aims to explore ruins around the world, she adds that it is a dream of Sore and all leaders of the Celestial Records. Some children gather and read a copy of the Celestial Record. One of them announces that he will become a Seraphim, but another replies that he cannot become the Seraphim, but the Shepherd. He waves his hands pretending to be the Shepherd, and the water close to them explodes, surprising him and the other boys. Turns out it was Mikleo passing by and happy that they were talking about Sore. Mikleo wonders if he should go and visit Elysia, and a voice speaks to him asking if he intends to visit him. Mikleo is surprised to hear Sore's voice, and Mikleo runs through the city until he gets to where Sore is. They exchange pleasantries, and Mikleo asks about Heldalf. Sore replies that Heldalf is trying to start over in a different town, and Mikleo asks Sore about his intentions. Sore shows him the image of a city in ruins, and they tease each other over who would be the first to get to the ruins. Then Sore suggests that they go together, they fuse and fly to the sky, they glide over the cities, and Sore marvels at the view of the world, 